It's the Benz Brunani woman is Baby boys, baby girls, you need to hear this Baby sit down, sit down, receive this realness Make sure your cup's ready for the tea we are go sip it here Hard time scrolling for your long shorts You might learn something you never know Could let you find And she's one of a kind Don't say you mind, say you mind Because nothing compares Nothing compares to you. You, you, you. Big up yourself, Sinead. Big up yourself. Ah, oh. and obviously Prince. Oh, my babes! No, not my babes. Not being here. what? Ugh. Oh. All of like the amazing, like a lot of the amazing musicians, singers, all of that, just we're losing recipes. We're losing song sheets. R.I.P. to the babes. Uh, oh, I look so sparkly in this new. <laughs> I was clearly using my camera wrong. <laughs> Brent came to do his magic. Brent and Jonathan came to come and help me at the office the other day to reconnect everything. And I th and I know you will all be proud to know that my iMac is now set up. Everything's connected to it. Although I do already envisage a problem because I should probably introduce myself before I go into what I'm about to say. It's me, Kalechi, the baby girl in the place to be. Wow, that's the one in it. And you are listening to SYM, officially known as Say Your Mind, unofficially known as What What? That's right, Suck Your Mum. Our days as a podcast are numbered, but I will get to that later. I'll get to that later. What I was going to say is I already envisage a problem. So now that my iMac and everything is all connected and all lovely and sparkly, the issue is that my it's now far away from me. So the desk, the roadcaster podcasting desk that takes in that takes in all of the, you know, the microphone, everything else. That is a way. Right. And so if I wanted to like play you something on Bluetooth, I would need to be like reaching over and my arms aren't that long to reach over there. But when we reach that bridge, we will cross it. I'm sure maybe I need like a long kind of you know those things what do they call what are they called those things that you just use to kind of whatever they're called use it to reach over and then use it to like push the volume up and then slide the volume down i'm sure there's a more kind of practical thing but i am so tired of technology technology will hear me say that and want to fight me but i am so tired of technology like the amount of gadgets i've had to buy in order to self-produce this podcast that's also part of what I wanted to talk about, but I'll get there shortly. Where was the, oh yeah, okay, oh my god, oh my god. Okay, so actually I was away, wasn't I? I was on a break. We were on a break. I was away in Jamaica, Jamaica. Jamaica, Jamaica. Welcome to Jam Rock. <laughs> and I was well and truly welcomed to the rock of the jams. It was great. I love Jamaica so much. I can't wait to go back. To be fair, I mainly, I was just in Kingston, really. I didn't venture out because I was only there for a short while. And I was staying in Uptown, daddy. I was staying in Uptown. But I did go downtown to go on a walking tour. Big up my host, Rihanna. Um, it was super cute. The mosquitoes definitely tried to deal with me. But they thought they were bad. But I'm in fact badder. So I had my neem oil and neem oil doesn't smell cute, but it just meant that the majority of the keto babies, the mosquitoes stayed away from me, but I did get bitten a couple of times. And the, what's mad is that the places I got bitten, I was just like, you motherfuckers are petty. You're petty. You're nasty wretches. You're petty bitches. Because it would be like the fold in my back. Like, what the fuck are you doing there? What are you doing in the fold in my back? You couldn't bite a young bum bum. You couldn't bite a young calf. You said, let me get into that fold and, and really bite you there. Madness. Absolute madness. But had a great time. <laughs> the rumors about the KFC over there are true. They are true. 
okay? KFC, there. The fact that you can choose like hot and spicy for your actual chicken, not just your wings. And then, then, you, oh, then there's the barbecue version and then you can get biscuits with it, you know, like the American biscuits. Oh, I really, I really ate. And then I learned of Island Grill. So the food there was cute too. We went to a couple of cute places to eat. We went to um, the beach for the day and we had fried fish there as well. It was so cute. I was just like, and for me, what's so beautiful about Jamaica for me is just like the topographical elements, like the, 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 just, just seeing how green it is. And these times I was in the city essentially, but just looking and just being like, rah, like, wow. Wow. And then learning more about the history of Jamaica firsthand was so important. And learning about the history of Jamaica firsthand through art was another thing altogether. Edna Manley, let me not say what I wanted to say because I know that you lot love her. But um, yeah, it was really, it was really, really fun. I can't wait to go back. I was just, like I said, there for a week. That journey though, Lord, Baba God, oh. Emi no fe, what's it? Emi no fe I don't even want to ride a range, Baba God. I don't want a Range Rover. I want to be able to take these long haul flights in like business class because I need to stretch out. Because when I say that my back was hurting, ha! Huh? I'm like, in this life, it no pay to be poor. It no pay to be poor. Poverty, I hate him. I hate him. I'm not poverty stricken in Jesus name. But I'm just saying like, raw. I was looking at the people in first class. Like they were just, there was one auntie there. Let me tell you on my way. Back, I just love the aunties that need to stun on you a little bit. That need to flex on you a little piece because auntie had no business coming to premium economy. She had no business, but she wanted to really let us know that I'm not with you. Pesantos, you peasants. I'm not with you. Like she came through to come and have one digger digger conversation with somebody. And then after she'd had like the conversation for a few minutes, she was like, <sighs> Well, I better head back. Girl, you know that's not back. You know that's forward. You know that's forward. So this back bitch move, get out, get out. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was it was cute. It was cute. And also um, British Airways, I have some things to say. If you know that a flight filled with people who are likely to ask for chicken when you offer them what's on the menu... Please have more of the chicken. I was sat in seat number 13. By the time these air hostess people, these um, air host uh, people got to me, it's like, oh, sorry, love. We've run out of the chicken. What do you mean? What do you mean? Sometimes, sometimes go with the stereotype. Sometimes go with the stereotype and assume we want chicken. Just have more of it. How are you only at seat 13 and you've run out of chicken already? I, that's why I was glad on the way back I'd bought my KFC but Sot's Law I'm lying because I did buy the KFC and took it on a plane with me is that the wind rain rain purple rain purple rain oh, it's raining outside anyway um it just caught me off guard because the way that it's lashing down it's lashing down um what was I saying? Even though I bought the KFC, I actually didn't end up even wanting to eat it on the plane because I was, I, I just realized that there's certain foods that I really like to eat where I unbutton my trousers or I really off my clothes. I really, really off my clothes and just eat in the solitude and the tranquility of my own home. I just want to enjoy, you know, I just want to have a good time. All right. So I ate the food that they offered on the plane, but I could eat my thing when I got home. Um, yeah, it was it was a beautiful trip. I definitely want to go back to Jamaica. Definitely. I, I feel like there's so obviously there's so much more to see. It was cute to go to Devon House. I had the ice cream from Devon House and also had food from a place called something, something jerk. Something jerk. But um, something I can't remember. I'm not saying the place was called something jerk. I'm saying it was called something jerk. I can't remember what jerk it was. But anyway, f 
food was great there, but Devon House Bakery, yo, they have a goat curry um, patty that is out of this world. I am happy to go back to Jamaica just to eat that goat curry patty. In fact, I don't want to say, in fact, somebody bring me back because I have to be honest that sometimes people make me food and I don't eat it because my mum's told me not to eat food from outside. Um... But I could very much fuck up that goat curry patty again. I could very... And then I learned about the importance of juicy and tasty patties. Oh, my God. I want to get involved in the feud because both bang differently. And, of course, when I got to the airport, I went to the shop and I bought the frozen patties to bring back, the, the ones that they packed in the boxes. I bought like bought back... I want to say six boxes because my brother asked me, do you know, like, I didn't even know that this was like a thing. It's when I was going and my brother was like, oh, when you come back, can you bring me, can you get me the patties, the ones in a box? I was like, huh? And then I told Rihanna and was like, and, and anyway, got to the airport, bought them and I know I've been changed. I no, I've been changed Cause the patties at the airport Called my name Woo! Yes, <laughs> yes I really, as you can see I'm only telling you about food But you know by now that's all I know in this life I just love food so much So much, must show in my cheeks <laughs> Must show in my cheeks, but I can't help it. I just love it. I just love it. Should I get into the actual episode? Maybe I should. <laughs> Maybe I should. I'll probably remember other things that I have to say later on. But um, yeah. I, no, is that important? I was just going to say that. It's so funny to me when you're coming through the airport to see the perceptions that people have specifically certain white people the perceptions that they have of jamaica before they arrive of course this guy will be calling me now when i'm recording you know when you have friends that they always choose when you're working that's when they want to call you and you can't even call them jobless people because they also have jobs where they will just call you at a really random time i'm not answering because i'm in my flow now <laughs> no pun intended but my flow was ex very heavy this week actually now that i think about it and i did because again because of the healing the womb healing work i've been doing with laurence i prioritized just staying in my bed so i was meant to go out and see friends i just did the my meetings from my bed and then i just didn't physically go outside just stayed home and took you know time with myself just being gentle with myself so that was great. That was great. But anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, the people that you see at the airport and their perception of what Jamaica is going to be and what they're wearing is really interesting to me because they keep telling you that Jamaica is rather conservative as a country and, you know, as a whole vibe. So you wearing what you're wearing, it's just interesting. I'm not shaming anybody or policing what anybody else wears, but I just think that the perception that certain people who are not from there i wouldn't just say white people because i think that's maybe a bit unfair as well but there are certain like white european girls that go there and i i definitely knew i know what they think they're going there to do but it was just wild seeing it sha but where i was um the girls were adding pressure like they were coming out with outfits they were coming out with outfits when we went out um what else? Yeah, quickly, obviously, I went to see Wizzy Baby at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. So I felt better by that point. Um, so I went to there. I think maybe I was tired as well, not just because of my flow, but I was tired because it was a long fucking journey to go to Jamaica and back in the space of a week. And I wasn't even like necessarily only chilling out there. Because of the time difference, I would get up early and I'd also do tarot readings in the morning. Like I do two tarot readings, like one to one tarot readings via Zoom, like pretty much most of the mornings that I was there. Uh, and it was beautiful to be able to do it out there. And while I was out there, I had the amazing inspiration to start offering email tarot readings. So you ask one question via email um, or front, you order it from my website, you type your question in 
Let me explain that again. You ask one question and I respond to you via email. So you go on my website, kalechiokafor.com, and then you go to shop and you can select it there as £22. One question. And don't ask, oh, I just want to generally know about my life because that's not one question. Ask something specific. Although some of you have emailed and asked me things that I don't necessarily read. I don't read certain things to do with, for instance, death. I don't read that but I could tell I could speak to you about it in the abstract but I don't tap into I don't want to tap into them kind of energies same with astrology there's certain things I'm just not going to read in astrology because it's actually termed as dark astrology and that is not my vibe homie so you can uh, buy the question one question and I love that people are clocking if you want to ask another question you buy you put two orders in and then you you can add the question one after the other and then it will charge you accordingly and then i'll email you all of your things back and people have been buying those one question tarot readings let me tell you um because i think like it's the happy medium between for instance not wanting to send a letter into the podcast because whatever you want to ask might be very very personal or you want to say you want to name some names because you're not trying to keep it in the playground okay so you could get that or and you don't want to commit yourself to 33 pounds every month for a month ahead reading although it's personalized to you for your month you're like okay i just will have one burning question can i ask if it's burning though probably get checked but no like if, if one burning question you can just um go on my website and purchase it there and i'll get it and i respond to you within seven days trust me there is a story to why i'm mentioning this now but i had that beautiful inspiration while i was out there and so now that's an offering that's on my site and i feel like everything is therefore coming together in a really cute way so i got the month ahead tarot readings that i can do um that people get who are subscribed uh, subscribed subscribe to the straw society tier on patreon patreon.com forward slash kalechi or you can do the uh one question um email tarot reading if you buy it from the shop on the website or you could try your luck and just email to the podcast sym at kalechi and i'll get to your letter whenever i get to your letter so there is so much to choose from however the podcast um element that you can choose from i don't know so well i guess now we're getting into the body of the podcast and let me just talk i don't know if i want to continue podcasting anymore i say that now as i literally look around my office and all this stuff that i bought in order to deliver better quality sound <laughs> although there was that day that i didn't have the microphone on um better quality sound better quality visuals all of that like i've put me as a person yeah i put everything into anything that i do if i don't that's why there's some things i just won't do because i know that i'm not going to be able to give it i give my all you knew it was coming to hell just one more episode with you i'd give my straws to flee at a pussy clot head top i'd give my straws for one episode of s-y-m that run was actually sick collect you big up yourself anyway i just don't know for all of this public facing stuff anymore you know like how they talk about the straw that broke the camel's back there was in fact and isn't that apt because this show is all about straws right um i feel like i found the straw that broke my back my back my back my back my blood clot back I don't know if you remember, but I don't even want to try and jog your memory because I've actually gone and scrubbed the episode that I even mentioned this person anyway. Let me talk about it in the abstract because they're a young person. So let me not like their frontal lobe or whatever hasn't even developed properly. They've still got a few years to go. So not going to go into the whole detail, but we know that recently there was that whole um i didn't even put in my notes to talk about but i might as well talk about it now you know the black woman in croydon who paid one pound 75 she paid her bus fare and then the revenue 
pussy cluts that get on the bus. I don't know why you're getting on the bus to check whether people have paid one pound seventy five during a cost of living crisis when you've literally got the fucking monarchy there that that's chopping money. But all of this ties together. Stay with me, won't you? Stay with me. So I. I'm not going to finish what I was going to say. Um. <laughs> you can see I've got so much to say. Si- mm, and not another song. So much to say since being away for one week. Um. Yeah, I don't know why you're getting on a bus to check that people have paid £1.75. If Sadiq Khan is beefing with the government because of how they're charging him for TFL and how they believe that they supported during lockdown and all of them things and what they had to subsidise, you to, you lot tear off your shirts, tear off your suit jackets and fight in the street. Like, leave the rest of us out of it. Like, so many political things would be sorted if the political leaders themselves, not, not soldiers, not all of us people, you lot, and I've said this on the podcast before, you lot meet up and fight, fight, tussle, roll in the mud, fight, yeah, with each other, leave the rest of us out of it, so, um, yeah, if you got that issue, you got that issue, anyway, they claim that this woman didn't pay her £1.75 fair, she's like, whatever is going on here, forget it, forget about it, she's gonna get off the bus, bus is stopped, a whole kerfuffle, police show up and start drapesing her up, dragging her about and handcuffing her, you're handcuffing, this is the way that we need to talk about the way, the ways in which we criminalise um, perceived poverty, again, I, I assert that she, and uh, that she paid her £1.75, but you lot are doing all of this over £1.75, the head of the IOPC, trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning, rape, is there raping or allegedly raping young girls, literally young girls, is it between the 12, 12 years old, 14 years old, whatever the, like, you've got so much, so many more fish to fry, and you're not even going to fry it as well as they do in Jamaica, but you've got so many fish to fry, but this is where you found yourselves dragging up this black woman in front of her child, in front of what is he five, her her son, a little boy. He's bawling his eyes out, seeing how you're dragging up his mum. And then the police, one police officer, ugly bitch, dickhead, he said to her while twisting up her arm, "Oh, get your arms behind your back, you daft cow. How you you look, you prom you've promised me that the reason that we need police is because they de-escalate situations. What was de-escalated about that?" That situation tell me tell me what now not a fucking thing was de-escalated by what was happening there and obviously it caused uproar i'll also use this time to say i know that you know we've got certain segments for certain things but i want to say a, a special suck your mum to people who will see that i'm on holiday and still tag me in these videos and still dm me these videos like oh you need to talk about this and this is ultimately what's bringing me to what i'm about to say that i don't know when but especially based on the experience i've had you know with plant medicine ayahuasca all of these things to really figure out what i need and how i can nourish myself and Uh, and the parent I need to be to myself I don't know why this is making me teary even thinking about it to be the mother that I would need to be to myself and looking at all the things that I take on for other people and in order to contribute to our sort of uh, fight for justice any mother would be like you know what I know how much you care and how much you love this stuff but you have to let it go podcast whatever the case like you've got to let these things go because when we really deep it what am I getting back for what I'm doing it's not to say that this needs to be transactional not at all but at the same time I'm not a dickhead I'm not a dickhead right the book is there the live shows are there of course I've got to announce that I've got another live show that's coming up but I've got all of these things there and I'm like I I guess the way that activists and people are presented and the way that black women, women across the board, but black women are presented. Oh, Jess, hilarious. You nonsense girl. Um, That's just come in my mind and that's not in my notes either. Um, But leave trans women alone. Stop that fuckery. Leave trans women alone. But um, what I was going to say is that like for all the labor, the free labor that people expect, right? 
the way that it's presented and the way that gender is a construct, people expect you to do things thanklessly forever and ever. And that your reward is, oh, well done for doing it. You good woman. Fuck that. I'm not a good woman. I'm not a good woman. I'm not a nice woman. I'm a kind soul. I wholeheartedly believe that of myself and I strive to be more kind and to be more giving. But like, I can't take the passive nature of all of this anymore. I think it's ridiculous. In a society that we know is already set up to not give me my dues because I choose to call things out. You think that then the people who are benefiting from what I'm doing would at least be like, well, we need to support because then it means that, you know, this person can continue doing what they're doing. And that is how infrastructures fail. That is how like rebels get tired and they're like you know what forget it i'm gonna if you if you lot are gonna assimilate i'm gonna join you in the assimilation why not and i'm gonna join you in the assimilation in this simulation let's do it because it just gets ridiculous when i was getting those dms and i was blocking blocking getting tagged i was blocking while i was getting tagged on insta and then I think, I can't remember, somebody said something like, oh, just don't check your Insta while you're on holiday. Have a good time. Fuck that. Why can't, what, do you see what I mean? I'm not allowed to do my thing because other people don't want to respect boundaries. So I need to keep at every point having less of a life because I need to consider other people and their fuckery. Nah. No. So I was talking about the straw that broke the camel's back. So a while ago, a similar situation happened to somebody else, a young person where their mum was also dragged about or cussed on the bus. I heard of the situation. I was just like, I want to support this family. Took them out, took this young person out with their, you know, parent. And I was like, you know, how can I support you? Like, what do you need? Because you're bright you've got, I believe you've got a bright future ahead of you. Like, what can I do? Do you need therapy sessions? Cause I'm happy to pay, um, for you to have those sessions because it must have been traumatic to have seen that. And also for all of the things that you've described that you've gone through, like that, all of that must've been traumatic. And I want to support in any way that I can. And I remember them saying to me, Oh yeah, I feel like I just want to be on TV I want to be on TV talking, you know, like talking like Dr. Shola. I want to be on TV talking like Dr. Shola, doing all of that. Oh, I love the royal family and the way she comes on TV and like talks about the royal family. I love them. I want to do that as well. I was like, okay. But in the first instance, do you not want to look at getting support for yourself to work through the thing? No, I want to do that. And I want to start like, it's mentoring people and doing this and doing that and for me I'm just like I believe in um wounded healers right I believe in people I feel like that's what I am in a sense where you've gone through things and because of the things that you've gone through you want to use that to help other people with their things so I definitely deep it but I went to a I, I did a lot of therapy I went I did a lot of therapy before committing myself to doing this what I'm doing now I think it is important to do for many reasons because otherwise you project on other people um you're kind of doing a form of spiritual bypassing where you're not really looking at and facing your own traumas so you want to live um vicariously through other people like there are so many reasons why it's good to kind of like work out your shit before you say that you want to do this and you want to do that and setting up businesses especially as a young person like you've got to consider taxes and things that you don't necessarily need to be taking on so I'm trying to advise from a point of like oh I see what's ahead I want to support but I just want you to kind of consider certain things no I want to be introduced to Dr Shola I want to be all right cool cool even I deep the way that they were talking to their mum that day when we when we met up for lunch I was like oh okay but by the by fine so then the other day I was talking about what happened to this mother who was um treated so badly over a bus fare that she actually had paid but even if she hadn't it's one pound 75 like get over your fucking life but she had paid so I'm talking about that and I'm like while you're chasing up this woman about one pound 75 how many police officers showed up for this one woman? 
dragging her up in, and handcuffing her in front of her son and her son is crying like there is a point to there is a reason that you would do all of that stuff where you want young black children to see their parents being like dragged about by police in order to assert the dominance and power structure for policing and then you'll turn around tomorrow and say oh we don't know why there's a distrust in the black community between you know of the you know with the black community and policing you don't know why you don't know why that's not giving you um, an example i already feel like this episode is losing the structure that it would usually have because i've got so many things that i need to get off my heart i need to express from my heart so you're saying that you don't understand that what don't you understand there what are you getting confused about so yeah so that's all happening i'm like you're dragging up this woman for one pound 75 but you lot spent 250 million pounds on a coronation um, and then even the money the grant that's given in order to do the upkeep of the palaces and the upkeep of the royal family that money's gone up as well by millions go to the palace to get this money go and send revenue officers and whoever else send them to the palace right this young person, I forgot that they said that they love the royal family, decided to come and try and get spicy with me about um, something along the lines of like your, your maybe it was just a very demeaning uh, undertone when you're thinking that I'm probably 20, I'm 20 years your senior. So I've been out here, right? talk about oh well what the monarchy don't have anything to do with this i know you're an activist so you might not be able to get yourself get you know get this in order let's all use our brains or let's all use our heads and not get into our emotions and involve the monarchy i'm like that's when i deep down i was like you're a fucking baby tory why did i not realize that you're a baby tory shit you're a black baby tory wow or a Tory, a, bu a budding black baby Tory is what I'm really witnessing here. Because how could you have had the experiences that you have and you still want to say that you love the royal family? What? And you're coming to bat for them in my mentions. So I'm like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> let's all be guided, right? Everything is linked. They write a whole thing. I didn't even entertain it. They wrote a whole thing in response to me. And then it was the meme. I think it was the meme that they used after that I just thought, nah, I'm done with helping people. I'm actually done. Because I think I talked about it years ago and I've had lots of guests since. But there was a point where the people that I'd had on as guests had snaked me in such a way that I just thought, no more guests, no more guests. Because this is mad and it's not even like oh, i'll collect you be a better judge of character because for me it's just like i just want to help i just want to help people and if i see people going through something and i believe in you know that how they've been treated is wrong i'm going to jump up and say something and i'm gonna want to support but i saw that and i was just like you know what i can see how villains have their origin stories because this and if I respond to you, I've got to remember that I'm, we're not age mates. Me and you's not size. So I can't do that because I'll further add to your trauma. So I've actually just got to leave you alone. Ah, I thought, you know what? Respectfully, fuck all of this. Like the support or the shadow support of people who love me behind the scenes and all of that stuff, is, it's not worth it this drama it's not worth me thinking about oh am i safe when i go out with my child is this okay is that okay it's not worth it like it's just not so i don't know when i'm packing it in but i don't think that there'll be a big hoo-ha and a big announcement but i like my social media that can just go towards henceforth promoting books and all of those things but me wanting to share opinions and and show and amplify things and do this and do that i'm going to start winding that all the way down and i say that and it's the hardest thing for me to say and do because i feel like we do need to amplify these things but i'm just like everybody else has got a fucking mouth like do it then like if if it's so 
kind of, if you could be so passive about me doing it, then you do it or don't do it. That's fine. Let it all go to shit. Like, and I feel that rather than trying to intellectualize how I feel right now, I might turn around and be like, okay, I feel better now. I've thought about it in hindsight and all is good. But where I'm at, I think it's good to be transparent about where I'm at and where I'm at is like, no, actually, fuck this. Because while I really do appreciate the numbers of people who show me support time and time and time again, I just look at the actual model of the thing, the actual framework of the thing. And it just, what I'm expending, I'm not seeing it even in little ways that I'd ask to see it. So yeah, no. And it, I think it was that, that interaction that got me thinking like, he said something like, yeah, go and get your thoughts together before you come back on our TV screens. Um, and da, 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 da. And I was like, who the fuck are you talking to? I'm not your mum. You can talk to your mum like your mum's a dickhead, but I'm not a dickhead. And I've, like, I've said it time, I'm not above slapping anybody up. But I know that Mother Ayahuasca wants better for me. So instead, I'm being asked to show grace. And I think that that's it. People try to act like love and light is easy. Love and light is not easy, my G, because the world makes it hard. I know that our like our true state, our true form is love and light, but it has been so heavily refracted in this world that we live in that it's so hard to stay in that state because people are testing you all the fucking time. And that's not to say that I'm above that, that I'm not above testing people, but it's really ridiculous. Was I going to talk about Wizkid earlier? Anyway, I was going to say that, you know, I look at the journey of things. And I remember um, 28th of November, 2021 was was um, Wizkid's last concert. And that was at eight, um, 02 or one of the concerts that he did at the 02. And I remember giving away my ticket at the last minute because I was just like, I cannot be in the throng of people in the general populace. I, my My nerves are not set up for that right now. I don't want to do it. I just don't. Cut to now where I interviewed him for Mix Mag and I love the interview that I got to do with him. Oh my God, we haven't even talked about that, that I got to interview Wizkid because I was on the plane when it went live. Yes. Ow. Two slaps on my chest. We got there in the end. So, um, interviewed Wizkid for the show for his headline show at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium um, and that show happened on Saturday which was yesterday at the point of recording and I just really had to think to myself like right and so many of you wrote it in the comments when I posted the video as well the mini video and I to uh, announced that I'd written the article uh, for Mix Mag Big Up Yourself Patrick Hinton um you reminded me, you were like, remember when you were talking about Wizkid and all the th things that you've said throughout the years and here you are interviewing him. And then obviously as a result, they were like, oh, do you want some VIP tickets to come to the show? And I was there in VIP like, this is literally what I asked for when it was December, sorry, November 2021, where I said, I don't want to just be downstairs. I like, I don't, I don't want to. And here I am in this cute little area and I can go when I want. I will say that the traffic over the past few days has been ungodly, ungodly for essentially a one hour show because Wizkid was on stage for one hour. Beyonce really has spoiled us. Um, and that doesn't take anything away from him. It's just that you really realize the different um, energy systems that different artists use to do what they do. Um, but yeah, he was on stage for one hour. It took me two hours to get there because of the traffic a journey that should have taken like 45 minutes took two hours to get there um one hour performance and then it took me <laughs> it took me three hours to get home three so i spent five hours in transit for a one hour show and I just know Addison Lee is going to charge me through my clitoris. They're going to charge the fuck out of me for all of that. I just know. And I feel nauseous thinking about it. I feel sick thinking about it. But I'm still glad I got to go to the show. 
it just felt like a full circle moment. It felt beautiful. Um, I will say though, for transparency's sake, the sound was not great. I don't like the visuals. I didn't like the visuals. The visuals very much felt like the team thought, oh, well, Beyonce was here last and she had like this metallic looking um, technology looking thing. So let's just have that in the background. But it didn't visually, it didn't marry with what he was doing on stage. It didn't, the visuals did not marry. Beyonce's visuals merged with the narrative of the, of Renaissance. This more love, less ego. What does a snake moving through scaffolding have to do with more love, less ego? What? I mean, one could say Kundalini, the snake, that's the love, the passion. Um, and then could say the scaffolding, the metal was the ego, the structure that we need to break out of. But that's me using my abstract skills, my skills for abstract thought to help that. That's not what you lot were doing, right? Wiz deserves better. Wiz deserves better. My brother, I won't say which one, did argue that he just thinks that on the flip side, like sometimes artists, male artists specifically, they're lazy. Like in terms of like, why why are you not showing up to rehearsals? Not that we know that this is the case, but why are you not showing up to rehearsals so you can be at one with your dancers? So it, you, so you're actually complimenting what they're doing as opposed to they're just dancing around you because like we need more craft. I I said it earlier. We're losing song sheets. We are. Give us a performance. And I love Wiz with all my heart. And the piece that I wrote about him, stand by it 100%. But if you're going to perform to about 60,000 people, the sound needs to be on point. The visuals need to be on point. We love you, Wizzy Baby, for life. But the, 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 the stagecraft, I don't know if it's the management team, I don't know who, but we need that to be tighter, yeah? Give us an experience. I mean, I'm glad that we got to go through his discography and have the earlier songs because when he again when he was singing st stuff from more love less ego people weren't really vibing like that people were just walking around doing what they were doing but the moment he moved to made in lagos sounds of the other side or sounds from the other side moved to um um ayo all of them once he started going into the back catalog the auntie and me leapt out it <laughs> leapt out i was back for the to the to, for my life but I will make a request at this point. We need a song where you actually say the name Fumilayo. If you can't say the name Kelechi, say the name Fumilayo. Because you said Tolani, Pakurumo, Pakurumo, she got called your dada. So Tolani, as in Tolly T, and all the other Tolanis are getting to dance. Um, um, Funsho. How did you get to Funsho? You got to Funsho before you got to Fumilayo. Wiz. Ayo Deji. Do better. I need more. But no, he's absolutely lovely. Like, actually speaking to him, he's super lovely. Like, there's just a... <laughs> I remember asking him, like, oh, your birthday's July 16th. So rare, 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 rare. I was talking to him about something. Was it July 16th? I think it was July 16th. Um, I was say, And he was like, oh, I'm not really into those astrology things. He tried to say it so respectfully, but instead of saying, like, my, fuck that shit. But, um... I think that even astrology would explain explain everything that's going on. Like doing that performance in a Venus retrograde, we just needed some more things. Um, but I love that the girlies, as we move towards Pluto and Aquarius, everybody's getting on to their... How long have I been talking? Jesus Christ. I love that everybody's getting into their whole kind of um, AI technology steez. It's cute. Um, yeah, thought I'd say that. But... Yeah, there's more talks of aliens now as well, isn't there? Admitting that they found like alien remains and all of that. Because we're moving towards that age. Like we're, we're going to be, the aliens have always lived, lived among us. I feel like we've more lived among them. Um, but they're going to make themselves known. And I just think, and I've said it on the podcast before, I just think it's going to be hilarious when they're like, oh, um, take us to your leader. I'm like, I don't know. What do you really... 
look, it's not really giving. Like, do what you need to do. I would. I don't rate them. You wouldn't rate them either. Like, they. I wouldn't really go to them for anything. Like, why do you want to speak to them exactly? You want to destroy? Oh, baby, destroy away. Destroy away. Like, we're, we're, we'll help you. We will overthrow them with you. Like, like, just let us. Just say jump. <laughs> just you know, we will say how high. Like, we're ready. We're ready. Who do you want to go for first? <laughs> you know. And, I thought, and I'll be interested to see who the first people are to start dating aliens if they're not already. I think it'll be interesting to see who starts dating aliens. I already have in my mind who the demographic of men that I think will be dating aliens first just because I've seen how they behave with AI and these robots. I already have in my mind who I think, let's see if you think the same, but you can write it in the comments on YouTube. This comes out on Tuesday. Or um, when you're listening on a Monday, drop drop your thoughts. But I already have in my mind the demographic of specifically men who I think, but across the board, let me know who you think will be the first to date an alien. Um, is that all I wanted to say? Yeah, actually, I should just get onto the tarot now. And yeah, let's get to the tarot. The letter here says, "Welp, today the day we are writing in." Um, disclaimer, trigger warning. I say we, but actually it is I, singular black woman, woman of Somali descent, late twenties, not practicing any religion, but is a believer in a higher being slash God. Aside from waiting for one-to-one sessions to become available and do a tarot reading with you today, I'm writing in, call it a testament. I'm not living in my truth, nor purpose filled with trauma, burden, regret. I live in shame and despair. For context, I've been estranged from my family since my teens after being banished along with my father to Somali, uh, to Somalia, I think that's meant to say, at 14. I was born and raised in the UK. My childhood was filled with xenophobia and all the isms. My parents judged, judged my friends and would scold me for spending time with Ghanaian and Jamaican friends. They used religion, threats and culture to try to influence or shame me. A year later, I returned riddled with confusion, shame and anger. Friends not emotionally equipped nor mature enough to have the conversation and understanding I required. Zero support ended up in the care system, battled addictions and self-harm. Um, sex one night stands uh, removed from social media in fear that my family would bring me a headache over a decade later I haven't moved on tried CBT DBT and endless various self-medication I'm now years older a new parent and I'm trapped in a relationship that's crippling me I think it's meant to say this grown man is taking me for idiot. Why? Because I don't value myself, because I lack a tribe around me that can remind me of the boss baby I am. Instead, I have agents and white women I pay to help me. Yes, I pay my therapist, specialist, ADHD coach, all of whom are all white. I know I need a new team of people. Fuck, I don't know for me. I had a lapse of judgment this week and called the woman who birthed me. I asked her what does now Uh, what does she know I think that's meant to say about autism she knew nothing but stereotypes and an ableist mindset this woman was mad and said the white people have come up with medical terms to restrict black people mind you I was diagnosed with dyslexia in year seven why did I call her perhaps I was lonely or needed her to validate my inner child I'm not sure motherhood is tough What I'm finding particularly difficult is accepting that I may have failed in life, failed at finding my happiness outside of my family home, the home of horrors. Just to be clear, it's not this man who's making me feel like this. It's me believing and allowing life to happen. I know I cannot function like this, nor is it tangible. I fear if I do not do something right now, I will not be able to come back from this. Do I have mum issues or is Or is it time to get a black therapist and do some culture informed in a in a child work? Recently, you mentioned mortality and how often people fear death. Although I'm not suicidal, I find the thought of dying as the only promised thing that will give me endless amount of peace, abundant amount of peace. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for releasing pockets of sanity whilst I nursed, washed dishes and sometimes cried. Love a lost baby girl. Listen, baby girl, I know that you sent this, you sent this a few months ago. And I just want to say, um, you haven't failed. Yeah, you haven't failed. 
sometimes the route that we take in life to rediscover, to remember our divinity, sometimes we take the scenic route, yeah? Sometimes we take the route that's got all the brambles and the hedges and the thorns. And while there might have been another path that w without all of those things, some reason, this is the path that we ended up on. I wouldn't necessarily say chose or any of those that we just ended up on this particular path. That doesn't mean that you failed because you don't know how close you are to the clearing. Ooh, spirit, thank you so much. Sometimes when we are in dark places and we can't see the wood for the trees and wow, this is a really forest giving metaphor. Um, when we can't see the wood for the trees, we don't know how close we are to finding a clearing. We don't know how close we are to seeing that path like really open out and be like, rah, okay, I can make a home here. I see the clearing now, I can make a home here. Or wow, I've made it home. Like, you don't know how close you are. Like, what are you judging as a failure? You know, what are you judging as a failure? What have you failed at? I wouldn't even necessarily, because I was going to catch myself, that I was going to say, what are you? What have you necessarily failed at when you're still alive? But that would mean that I'm insinuating that people who maybe have taken their own lives have, have failed in another way. And that's not what I mean. What I mean here is that you still have a possibility many possibilities to unfail if that's what you're calling it if you're saying that you're, you failed which i don't believe you have you have you're still alive so that means you have the opportunity to unfail right every day is a chance at a new beginning and that's not to i don't mean that in a woo woo way of oh just wake up and change your thoughts and life is better all of a sudden because me changing my thoughts doesn't change the fucking institutional and systemic de um, depraved oppressions and um, that stop me from living my best life but what I'm saying by that is like, even in the small changes, even in little ways, I, like for me, I have a lot of like, I catastrophize a lot and it's calmed down a lot since going to Peru, but that doesn't mean it's gone altogether. And since some people have tried, um, you know, psilocybin, one could say that that also makes you um, aware of your thoughts more. So being aware for me personally of where my thoughts tend to spiral has helped me a lot over the past few months, you know, from February to now, what are we, by the time this comes out now, we'll still be in July. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll be coming to the end of July, but in the, sp in the space of um, February to July, I feel like I've grown so much and that growth they it, it, at times at times it's felt incremental where I can't show somebody on maybe I want to say I can't show somebody on the outside what I've been doing but I've had people actually say to me like you you've got a different energy about you since coming back from Peru there's just something different like that doesn't mean you've stopped cussing people out but you just move different I can feel it it's something about your aura something's just shifted and I feel it in myself where even the nature of this podcast like while I might still be talking about things that on the surface might seem the same I'm approaching it in different ways I feel that the energy that I'm putting into putting into it is different and so I say all of that to say like it's the little changes like not all of us can like jump up and run off to Peru right but it's the it's the little changes it's catching myself when I'm about to have a thought that's only going to get my anxiety up um, or, you know, I'm, when I catch myself about to have thoughts that are filled with anxiety and going, uh, uh, what is the root of this? Why do and usually the root of it still always comes back to love. I'm anxious of losing somebody that I love. I'm anxious of this happening to something I love that, and, and, and having to check myself that. And I, and I'm so grateful that one of the things that stuck with me or that one of the visions that stayed with me in every moment of life since coming back from Peru was, um, everybody returns home in the end and when I when I had that come into my consciousness during one of the ayahuasca ceremonies I sobbed my heart out because it was just a reminder an affirmation and everything a declaration everybody returns home in the end I don't know how long it's going to take for some people because some people are really really moving mad but eventually 
when all is said and done, all will be in fact said and all in fact will be done. Right. So I had to really kind of, yeah, I had to really sit in that knowledge because of you and what you wrote in. I'll share something with you. And I made a point of saying I'm not talking about my ayahuasca um, experience. I'm not talking about my visions. I'm not going into depth like that. And there are people who have asked and I'm just like, Mm, are we boys enough for me like are we girlies enough for me to share that information with you like if we go off what maybe you said about me no just like just generally like not everybody needs to be privy to what i experienced but i'll share this because it's you and what you wrote a lost baby girl one of the visions that i had one of the first visions that i had um when i uh, was in peru um, during the ayahuasca ceremonies, uh, I remember seeing oh a tree stump. I remember seeing a tree stump, and then there was like a door on the tree stump, and then I walked through the door, and there was this old lady, old old lady sat there, and like a grandma, um, white hair, like just lovely, and she sat there and she's like. I'm so proud of you for making it back. Welcome back. And it just made me think about the expanse of our souls. Like, where have we been before that we don't even remember that we've been there? Why did I want to go to Peru specifically? Um, it just felt familiar. I felt okay. I felt okay being there. And I'm really interested in uh, um, astrocartography. And I've been looking at certain lines and where they run through. And for me, it's interesting that the, the places that I chose to go to this year, they run um, like specifically Peru and Jamaica, they run in a particular place in a partic particular way on my chart. Um, so it felt like a remembering. It felt like even if I hadn't necessarily been there before there was something I needed from these places in order to reconnect certain um pathways whether they be neural pathways spiritual pathways in order that I can do whatever it is that I'm meant to be doing while I'm here right in this physical experience so she says you know I'm proud of you for making it back welcome back and I remember in the vision, I just started to cry. I was crying in the vision and I was also crying in, you know, in my, in the physical self um, during this ceremony. Um, I was sobbing. I spent a lot of time sobbing. It just felt like I remember writing it to my patrons on Patreon when I finally arrived in Petru Peru. And I said that aspects of me feels like I was I came into this life already heartbroken and it feels like the journey that I'm on in this life is to heal my broken heart and heal and help other people mend and heal their broken hearts along the way. And I feel like if anything, regardless of, you know, some of the things that I said earlier about this podcast and like what I, what I feel like it takes from me, what I expend doing it, I know that this can live on beyond me, right? Like this, this these episodes i'm not going to pull them down like if, even if i decide never to make an never to make another episode i've shared so much of myself in a way that i can't think of any other singular black person black woman has shared in you know publicly um in this way in in the i don't know past 20 years right so that in in and of itself is a seminal piece of work is it's it's a massive spiritual practice because i know how much i've grown from episode one even zero to where i am now um it's been a long journey and and i'm proud of myself for that so anybody who has anything to say and critique and this and that like show me do it do it you do it you do it and I think that that's what's interesting. People having, oh, I, for a moment there, I thought Colette, she lost her way for a moment. Da, da, da. You do it. You be as vulnerable. You be as transparent on, on to um, thousands and thousands and thousands of people every week for years. You do it. And then you'll understand what it takes to do what I've been doing. But then, um, like I said, uh, as soon as she said that in the vision, I just started sobbing and I said to her I am so tired I am so so tired 
and she held me and I just felt safe. I felt, you know, because one the the main intention that I set initially when I went on the trip was I want to learn about unconditional love and practicing unconditional love for myself and all the things that I've been through. I want to experience a love unlike anything I've ever experienced in this physical realm. And boom, from that first ceremony, I was in it. I was in that space. And over the next three ceremonies, even the fourth one as well, I was shown so many facets to what it takes to practice unconditional unconditional love and that was only the beginning I feel like I was shown the things and it was just like well get to work then and I think that that's what I found so challenging since returning from Peru that I've got to integrate all that I've seen and it's not something I can talk to just anybody about even my friends like if they listen to this podcast might be the first time that they're even hearing me talk about any aspect of this because I've kept everything so like I've kept everything in but people at the same time are saying to me oh you're glowing you're looking radiant you're because I think that there was a healing that was happening from the inside and some of it might be shown on the outside but I know I've still got quite a way to go as the world changes around me and the, as the world is changing I'm realizing why certain visions were shown to me in the way that they were shown to me because it's like yo you've got a journey ahead of you baby girl so here are the here are the tips here are the hacks um so yeah I said that that you know I'm so tired and I don't feel beautiful and I just feel run down I'm just exhausted and like she hugged me held me and I felt that love I felt that beautiful immense love and then after hugging me she then reached out for the sun like she reached and took the sun out of the sky and she said to me drink this and I was like oh I can't it's gonna burn and she said and she just laughed like like an old wise woman she just laughed and so I drank the sun and I've never felt love like it uh, ever never love like this before like it just felt so beautiful and it just made me think about the fact that that's it if the relationships that I have in life do not bring about that feeling that I felt there of drinking the sun then I'm all right like I'm all right I don't need them you know, friendships, whatever the case may be, job opportunities. I don't need them. Not that everything is going to feel th that intense and that amazing. But come on, like, we should have a little, a little shimmer, a little pizzazz, a little something, right? And that's, and I say that to you because I can't explain it better than life can feel like that life can feel like you've had a sip of the sun in the best way and I want with all of my heart for you to experience what that feels like and that's why I know that you feel lost but you've just got to keep taking one step after the next taking one breath after the next and just because you don't know when the clearing is going to be when you're going to reach the clearing and a new a whole new space opens up to you and then you're in another part of your journey so I'll pull some cards for you for us to see um what advice there is because I've really been talking child one hour two minutes let's see what advice there is or oh, one card's already come out let me switch screens one card's already come out for you get another card for our lost baby girl because I feel you about when you reached out to your mum and just wanting that comfort and that's why I was inspired to tell you the story about one of my visions because otherwise I wouldn't mention it I just make a point of like not mentioning the visions although I did speak about that an aspect of that vision um on another podcast that's not out yet somebody else's podcast um let's see other cards that we've got for a lost baby girl okay it's almost going off what i'd already said to you but let's see i'm using the oksana is it oksana okana okana deck as well it's very pretty like black and gold move it into the screen two cards came out there 
And then let's use wisdom of the oracle and see what the advice is in that regard as well. Uh, you know what's funny? I was reading, I did a reading for somebody while I was out in Jamaica and he said that they used to be one of those people that would skip ahead whenever the tarot part came on the podcast until one day life was really lifing and they listened for the first time and they're like whoa and here we are having a reading but I feel like the message will always find people when it needs to find them all right so I'm going to read from the um uh, dickhead in recovery uh, affirmations for a dickhead in recovery I'll read from that card first that came out for you it looks so pretty on camera it says here um, I invite passion into every aspect of my life a passion that moves me to become the greatest manifestation of myself and I was literally talking to you about the sun and what I'm not like the that I I need to feel that in every aspect of my life going forward that passion is a great word for it but what I felt was like you know the the sun the heat of course yeah passion but love like just love like just unfiltered raw beautiful love the 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 love that is where we create from you the, you know th and that's what I'm getting here that very much that sacral energy so I invite passion into every aspect of my life is saying that what do you enjoy what are you passionate about and the thing is when you're a new mother as well yo it feels like passion and all of them things there can go out the window because your priority it feels like is keeping this person alive and doing all that you need to do there so you kind of put yourself in the you know on the back burner huh, burning but you have to prioritize you the next card we've got here is the four of cups and four of cups we see this figure this person meditating um and then they're being handed a cup from out of from the kind of right side of the card and usually in a traditional deck it's being handed to them through a cloud so like the hand of god giving them a, th a fourth cup they've already got three around them in a traditional deck they are they have their arms folded and they look rather forlorn and um yeah they just seem like they're kind of sulking or pouting but the way that it's depicted in this deck makes me think about the fact that you're being asked to center yourself if you can get into nature sit at the base of a tree it sounds so woo woo but go with me because we know that how we talk about oh like mother nature and all of those things and when you said that you reached out for, to your mum and what you wanted in that moment was to you know to feel the familiarity of a mother's love I would say so I would encourage you to like if you can maybe when you take your baby out for a walk um find a tree like put the buggy by you find a tree and sit at the base of the tree place your hand on the trunk and just say everything that's been on your heart that's been on your mind that you've been holding and let the tree let the roots let, let the soil hold that pain for you I'm not saying that it's going to heal all of the things because you've been through a lot uh, we've got cups again ace of cups i don't know if you're pregnant again but um ace of cups here um, makes me think about um our cup running over and then we've got that dove um that's flying above that's holding an olive branch this is not necessarily about this olive branch being about your family this is an olive branch about forgiving yourself you mentioned all the things that you kind of um experienced and went through when you um you know in the past and so about the self-harm and the um one night stands and the things that you felt like were self-harming um behaviors for you where you were at in your life and this is saying that you've got to forgive yourself so it's not even about thinking about other people and when you forgive them you've got to forgive yourself and this is why maybe you're being called to the base of the tree to start there because this is the second hand reaching out from the sky offering a cup there is an opportunity that's been offered to you here for you to have your cup running over with um happiness i also feel that that means that there's something something feels like it's coming for you like a, a source of emotional fulfillment um that might not yet be here but it is coming um, but you you need to get out into nature first and foremost and start practicing that. And I would think because I'm looking at this bl uh, black hand as well in the four of cups card, your suggestion about possibly trying a black therapist, I think it's a good one to try out. I'm not saying that it's going to solve everything, but why not? Why not start there? You know, why not? Because I know it definitely helped me. Um, my first therapist, the white Italian woman, I thought she was shit. 
that's not to say that white inf- white Italian therapists are shit. She was just horrendous. And so I felt like, well, there might still be a risk that I have a black therapist and she's shit, but let me at least give it a shot. And um, it proved to be very, very worthwhile. We've got the eight of pentacles here that came out in reverse because this isn't about another weight of you know this isn't about working on yourself this isn't another another thing about self-help because I think sometimes some of us get so bogged down with doing all of this self-help stuff as a way to further uh, reinforce to ourselves that we're not yet perfect we're not yet good enough so we work and work and we read and read and we do and do and do and this is saying nah this is not what you're being asked to do there yeah this isn't about you trying to fix yourself no this is just about you almost being at um at peace or accepting that yeah you're lost that's so that's okay like you feel lost you're that's okay and again we've got the ace of wands that comes up here again in reverse like this is not a time of doing merely being like take your problems take your feelings take your pain take your angst take your anxiety take it to the trees like let them hold it for you that's what you're being asked to do here um, for the Arcana deck, we've got Ashe. The world was created by one. It's a beautiful card. And then we just see the sign of eternity um, in it as well. It's very pretty. Um, and I feel like that's just a reminding of yourself, a reminding a reminder for yourself that you should start speaking life into yourself. And I'm not just saying about like just these affirmations. Like the, that's why I made um, affirmations for a dickhead in recovery for the people that don't necessarily like affirmations and it feels weird and clunky. Like just start speaking life into yourself in very, very real ways. Even if what you say to yourself today is, oh, you know what? Today I like my eyes. Like, oh, today my cheeks are glowing. Like just anything, just start appreciating yourself in small small ways um i think that that really proves useful especially when you've just had a child to bring you back to you and then the other card we've got here is wicked one who sows the seeds of hatred will see their children harvest the fruits reminding you that this happened before you you know you're carrying um generational burdens you're carrying generational pain as well from the ways that the ways in which your parents behaved all of that stuff you're carrying that with you so sometimes your thoughts are not your own in the sense that these things are things that have happened that you've been programmed that you've been socialized into um believing about yourself and believing um, of the world and you've got to um kind of start freeing yourself of it by giving it back to the world give those thoughts and feelings back to the world because they don't belong to you and then for the final card we've got number 42 chop wood (laughs) haha it's like the tattoo i've got on my wrist chop wood carry water um so before i even open the card again it's wood again we're coming back to trees the reason that we see chop wood carry water it, um, before I even read the meaning is talking about just the day to day things. You don't have to do anything extraordinary to find healing. It's just starting with the mundane day to day things and remembering them and keeping them up. You know, like I said earlier, like just starting with the small things that is enough not trying to do anything major or massive and thinking that that's the only way that true change is validated because it's a massive act no just you doing your ba- your basic day-to-day things is enough so then we've got number 42 um why is my hair sticking up number 42 uh the card meaning says here there are times when the big dream is meant to lie dormant in your consciousness so that you can pay attention to the simple chores in your life. Consider why pruning a tree is the forerunner of delighting in the beautiful blooms when it is in full blossom. The mundane act of pulling off dead leaves, watering the soil and then leaving it to be to let nature take its course is an important step in manifestation taking your attention away from your goal brings you into a state of receptivity this is the deeper purpose of releasing attachment when you engage in everyday tasks in a meditative contemplative way you clear your energy to receive your aha moments which brings you ever closer to what you seek um And then the relationship message, I think, applies to you as well. It says nothing is as important right now as just doing what you need to do day to day. Let your heart remember that not everything has to be hard won, passionate or even obviously meaningful. Relationships and friendships go through lulls when the everyday tasks are at the center of awareness. That is uh, perfect now 
hold hands, wash dishes, make a fire, read a book, share a meal, say nothing, stare into space, pick up socks, tell a dumb joke and leave space to breathe. The work of your relationship right now is very simple. Just to be present. I said that to you. Not about doing, just being. Funny how it takes work to just be. All is well, really. So I pray that that speaks to you, baby girl. Um, You're not lost, you know. You're just, you know, remembering. That's all. So I pray that that resonates with you. And I will rush ahead, I guess. And um, big up this week's show sponsors, who I believe are Dipsy. Be right back. Thank you, Dipsy babies, for sponsoring this week's episode. So, like, I was just talking about passion, right? And I think that a major part of that is also self-pleasure. We can't shy away from thinking about self-pleasure and how that is instrumental to connecting with spirit. I think so. Like, I think it's also a powerful manifesting tool as well. Um, Some call it sex magic. They call it all of the things. But I'm just saying, like, being able to connect with yourself in a deeper way, to be able to engage yourself in euphoric feelings, to be able to tap into that, to know how to do that directly, that really, really helps when you're thinking about the your things that your your desires, the things that you want to manifest in your life, because you know you're tapped into the energy of what that should feel like. So I implore you, to think about self-pleasure because picture it you're hanging out you know at your favorite spot got your headphones on and the world around you is just fading away because you're listening to dipsy stories and you're immersed in a vivid world where you're feeling every touch every breath every stolen glance is just oh filled with breathtaking intensity so if you don't know about dipsy yet let me tell you dipsy is an app And it's full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed by women for women. Oh, just hilarious. Does not need to hear that. Uh, They bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and realistic characters. So you can discover stories about a range of things. Second chance romances, adventures on vacation, um, you know, um, vacation flings, as it were. And um, yeah, then some of them are just very hot and heavy and a little bit rough, if you like it that way. Um, it's wonderful. You can basically listen to spicy audios now, even from your favorite TikTok creators. And I feel like, you know what, if that's your thing, do it. Um, they are very attentive to your every need and they prioritize your pleasure and have voices that will make you melt. I can think of one person specifically on TikTok that has that ability. Um, Anyway, new content is released every week. So in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, you can always find something new to explore. Uh, They've also got sleep, uh, soothing sleep stories. They've got wellness sessions and sexy written stories. So you can read that if that's more of your vibe. So let Dipsy be your go-to place for your me time. Spicing it up doing the things explore your fantasies relax or unwind and even heat things up with a partner if that's what you want to do <laughs> so for listeners of this show dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash straws that's 30 days of full access for free when you go to dipsea.com slash straws that's dipsystories.com slash straws. Go and get yourself involved. Have a good old time. And let's move on into the actual bulk of the show. <laughs> now that we're like an hour and something in. Ow! And we're back. Okay. Show Magnificence. Let's get into it. Um, before I talk about Show Magnificence, I'll use this opportunity to say that now, as we move towards the rollout of this book, I'm really about... So whenever all of this will be winding down, who knows? Um, I will say that Saturday, sorry, Tuesday, 12th of September. So that's two days officially before my book comes out. I'll be having the book launch at the Barbican. You already know that. So um, they'll make the, we'll be making the announcement as to who is going to be my host very, very soon. Um, Somebody that we all love, a very, very lovely baby person um so that was that's happening tuesday 12th at the barbican saturday 7th of october my birthday's 5th of october saturday 7th of october i'll be doing um a live show in peckham 
um, as part of Peck and Playground, organized by Show and Tell. It's a comedy festival. And so I'll be, um, yeah, doing um, a Say Your Mind podcast live show there. Um, it'll be in the afternoon around 1 p.m. So make sure you get your tickets. I'll put the link in my bio. No, my bio in the comments of this. It's already in my bio. Whatever you click on where my bio is, whether it's on Instagram or Twitter, you'll see um, a link there to get your tickets for that show. I'm so glad I'm going to be doing an event in Peckham. Uh, and I'll be signing my book there as well um, on the Saturday 7th of October. And then I think maybe after that, I'll just whisk myself away for some kind of birthday treat because I don't think I'll be able to, I don't think I would go away knowing that I've got to be around for Saturday. I think I'd prefer to then go away Saturday evening, but I haven't made my mind up yet. And also 16th of December, I've got an event with um, Shelf Interest, which is a new, uh, newly launched book, uh, book club. So that will be happening. So there's lots of places that you're going to see me, but also 28th of August, I believe. Let me make sure I've got that right. There's um, an event in Brixton. So, you know, South London all day, every day, baby. Um, there's an event in Brixton that is organised by Dark Matter and Roundtable Books. It's called Discovering Speculative Fiction and Sci-Fi. And I'm one of the panellists. So it's 22nd of August. So um, I'll be there. Kaleshi Okafor, obviously. Uh, Courtier Newland, um, Temi O, and um, Aqua will be the host of that event. So that's Tuesday, 22nd of August at 6.30 p.m. at Brixton House. So you can get your tickets for that as well. So it's a busy, busy time for me. It is picking up, girl. So just letting you know that. But for my magnificence, um, mentioning South London, somebody who was actually born in South London, Herne Hill, big up yourself, Sinead O'Connor, R.I.P., baby girl, R.I.P. Um, I don't know, because she changed her name, didn't she? So I don't, I, I would want to refer to her by the name that she wants to go by. Um, but it says here, um, uh, with great sadness her family announced that she had passed away and that they're all devastated the cause of death was not made public but you don't gotta tell me anything it's fine um but you know there's this whole obituary to her it says born um, Sinead Marie Bernadette O'Connor um why did I say she was born in she wasn't born in South London she was born in Dublin I made that up I don't know why I thought she was born in South London she was born in Dublin um, or maybe they have a Herne Hill in Dublin as well. Maybe that's what it was. And I saw Herne Hill and I was like, South London, but it's not. Um, yeah, the reason I'm bigging up Sinead O'Connor is because she went through it. She really, really went through it. Like, from giving us amazing songs, um, she can, you know, she gave us amazing songs, did all of that, but she didn't let her, um, the industry stop her from calling out um, institutions that she believed needed to be called out even if it meant that her own like people turning against her and even people like was it Joe Pesci or somebody making jokes about even assault in her because of how the 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 furor that everybody felt when she tore up a picture of the Pope I think she did it during uh Saturday Night Live yeah in um yeah in 1992 she did that um where she tore up, she says here, she ripped up, a, it says here, she ripped up a picture of Pope John Paul II on US TV show Saturday Night Live, where she was invited, where she was the invited performer. Um, she, following an acapella performance of Bob Marley's War, she looked at the camera and said, fight the real enemy, a protest against child sexual abuse in the Catholic Church. Um, her actions resulted in her being banned for life by a broadcaster NBC and protests against her in the US, which saw copies of her records destroyed in New York's Times Square. Um, I'm not sorry I did it. It was brilliant, she said in an interview with the New York Times in 2021. O'Connor's last album, I'm Not Bossy, I'm the Boss, was released in 2014. I'd like to see her chart. I think we have similarities in our charts because that is a baby girl behavior. Convert into Islam in, well, revert into Islam in 2018. The Dublin singer changed her name to Shahada Sadakat, uh, but continued to perform under her birth name. Uh, she released the memoir, Rememberings. See, remembering, again, like, it's giving, 
ethereal being that came here to do what needed to be done and left. It's giving Pisces placement, I feel it. Um, in 2021, in January 2022, um, oh God, I can't remember that, read that. Her 17 year old son, Shane, was found dead after being reported missing two days previously. So RIP to him. Um, writing on social media following his death, she said he had decided to end his earthly struggle and request requested that no one follows his example um the singer later cancelled all live performances for the rest of 2022 due to her continuing grief following the death of her son um o'connor paid tribute to shane in one of her final tweets calling him the love of my life the lamp of my soul we were one soul in two halves um yeah there's a film that's coming out or that is out i think about her life that she had more of a say in everyone paying their tributes the reason i said Sinead o'connor and you know like i'm rarely picking up white people on the show but Sinead o'connor because that was a real rebel spirit and i feel like seeing the announcement of her passing and the way that I've been feeling when I said to you what I talked about earlier in the podcast about the straw that broke the camel's back. I refuse to walk this earth saying the things that needs need to be said and feeling lonely the whole time, like being an example. And then later on being like, you know what? Collect, she had a point there. You know what? She did have a point. Meanwhile, everybody's been moving mad. And I've had so many instances over the past few years of where people have just looked on and stood by as people have moved mad i know that there are those of you who are like you ride with me hard you ride with me heavy and you support outwardly and you do what needs to be done and god will continue to bless you like a thousand a million fold like you deserve it thank you so so much for never waiting for the public or waiting for the general the, the majority to feel a particular way before like, you say like actually this is wrong so i appreciate you for that but I just in a general sense, I look at her life and what she was calling out that she was calling out at a time where people could really move the way that they were moving about her, destroying her records, like saying the wildest things about her because she said something that now we are talking about more like and should be talking about even more, which is the rampant nature of child abuse within a lot of religions, but specifically within the Catholic Church. Like we should be able to call it as it is but at the time people didn't want her to say what she was saying so two slaps on your chest two eternal slaps on your chest baby girl like uh, shuhada sadaka aka Sinead o'connor big up yourself big up yourself for being a light worker for coming here to, for being a truth teller for being a way, way shower like you had your things that you had to, that you were dealing with uh, you know throughout your life and you still tried to find and I don't want to even say try. You found a truth that you felt was worth fighting for. So big up yourself. Thank you so, so much for what you've done. Um, so that's that for my show, um, show Your Magnificence. What did I want to say for So You Mad? I feel like there's so much for So You Mad. First of all, I want to big up another Libra baby. I'm sure I've got that right because I didn't get it right that Sinead was from South London. I always knew she was Irish, but I thought maybe she was of Irish heritage and then she went back there. Anyway that's by the by back to what i'm saying big up a fellow libra baby girl cardi b cardi b i was going to say her name's condoleezza bryce but it's not that's not her name cardi b was recently performing and somebody in the audience at this um outdoor show she was performing at she had on a cute orange dress decided to throw a drink at her and i just really rate my cardinal babe like cardinal b is what she's because because Lib libra is a cardinal sign cardinal b cardi b dashed a microphone at this person's head like she dashed the microphone she was holding she dashed it in that audience and licked the person that decided to throw that drink at her because i don't know what the fuck is wrong with some of you lot the other week somebody was dashing the the, the ashes of their mother at pink and then now you are dashing your drink at cardi b like what is going on like why can't you lot keep the things that you've brought to the shows in the containers why do you think it's okay to throw it at people and this is what i resonate with cardi on many levels has cardi got I can't, I don't know her placements, but that Libra son, I think that people talk about Libras like, oh, they're so indecisive. They're so this, they're so that. Remember that Libra is directly opposite to Aries. So where Aries 
might pop off in one way, Libras are known to pop off in another way. And so I love that quickly, quickly, like Cardi weighed up what had just happened there and instantly sought justice, instantly sought justice. I think that that's what differs with Aries. Aries, they don't need to know whether it's just or not. They're going to do what they need to do. But Libras, we have an innate sense of like, nah, that was unfair. And then we react. So we still got the energy of Aries. We just have to weigh up whether we're going to use that energy. And some of us weigh up more quickly than others. And I feel like myself and Cardi, we move the same way. I'm glad that she dashed the microphone at that person's head because you're an idiot. Why are you throwing drink at people? A jealousy is really doing some of you lot. Like, why are you going to shows where you're going to, your jealousy of the person that's on stage means that you're going to throw something at, like, there's been discourse online recently where somebody came online and they said that their friend recently got engaged and they can't lie, they're vexed because they haven't had that happen in their life and everybody's talking about, oh, maybe is it healthy, is it not to express when you're feeling jealousy? Like, take it up with your therapist or take it up with your journal. Like, do something. But saying that you're vexed, that's a bit worrying. I know that jealousy is an emotion that we all feel. I just think how we go about expressing it is the thing. I just don't know if you should have come on the internet to let everybody know that you're jealous is the thing. But I feel like jealousy is a part of why that person dashed a drink at Cardi. And that's why I'm glad that that jealousy, that jealousy was like knocked, like your, your head was reconfigured by that microphone being dashed at your head top, you idiot. Like you can't keep treating artists in this way that you could just do whatever you feel whatever you like to them when they're on when they're on stage it's ridiculous um okay so i've got that out of the way do i talk about this okay let's get into it so you know how i mentioned that this is the this is the main headliner for for so you mad right yeah i'm gonna talk about it now so before i offer a service um, for tarot or anything else I like to try out other people who currently offer the service so I know how they're doing it so I kind of see what the industry sort of standard is and then I go from there adding my little pizzazz I did it when before I started the month ahead readings I needed to find a camera angle that didn't involve me showing my face because I just want to be able to record people's readings for the month ahead and get them sent out and so I got a couple of readings from people who only show their their hands and I saw how they would doing and i was like okay i've got the gist of this and i'm now gonna do it my way i did it my way so got the gist started doing a the thing then i started thinking about email tarot readings so got a couple of email tarot readings the questions are never too too much never too much never too much and never too much because i can read for myself in it but it's always good. It's also good to get readings from other people. So it's not like I didn't care about what they would say in the readings. Um, but, um, it, you know, it, it is what it is. Because I always check with my ancestors. I always check with my sources, regardless. So anyway, I booked a reading, an email tarot reading from this woman who's quite known on like, well, I, I'm, I'm only learning now that she bought followers but it seems to be rather known when she does her tiktok lives and she's doing her readings or whatever so I bought an email tarot reading from her I submitted my question she then emailed back and she was like oh she needs dates uh, date the date of birth of such and such um and so I sent the date of birth to her and she says that she takes seven days to do these readings she does not she's a liar um but either way she she responded on the seventh day that she needed more information and then when it was sent to her she took another like four days to then come back but um yeah whatever so i eventually received this reading and this is why i'm so proud of where i'm at on my spiritual journey because instantly i knew something was off like the way it was written I was like, this reads like it's from the internet. I can't explain it to you. I cannot explain it to you for the life of me. But I was reading the very short, um, the very, if you imagine how much she wants to charge for these email um, tarot readings, way more than what I am charging. So the size, the length of it was so rubbish. And so I was reading it though, but I was just like, this, ah, it feels like the internet. It feels like the internet. So something in my spirit was like, highlight a section of this and just drop it into Google. 
baby girls, baby boys, baby non-binaries. Why did a site come up that had the exact words verbatim? So I did it with another section of the reading. Another site came up. So she just pulled all of these um, bits from websites. She pulled these, the what she sent me, that it was appa apparently a personal email reading. She just pulled from different websites. One of them is just a website where you type in the day and the month that somebody is born and then it will give you their kind of personality type. And that's not to say that these sorts of things don't have levels of accuracy, but you're not even an astrologer. So you're not even going with the year, the time, the location. You're not going with an actual birth chart. You're just taking the day and the month, girl, at your age. That's all you've got. And apparently you've been in a business for 20 years and that's all you've got. So I was like okay this is wild and then even in the tarot reading that she sent she only pulled one card how i mean it's possible to do a reading and just do a one card pull but what she did i just thought nah again googled it um just highlighted the words and then the exact thing that she'd written word for word was on that web website so i re um, emailed her back and i said i'm very disappointed in this reading because you've just it's either you you used a uh, chat gpt or something or you've just copy and pasted from different websites that's what i said i said i'm not even going to ask for my money back i'm just letting you know that what you're doing lacks integrity and is spiritually unhygienic should you need a better website in the future to to read about people's um dates of births and and um birth chart information from try this one so even in cussing her out i'm just like do better because there are people who come to you like who are vulnerable do better like i didn't care either way for me but other people are coming to you in moments when they're distressed distraught really looking for answers they feel lost and this is what you're giving them and you're taking their money and you're talking about you've been in the industry for 20 years. Motherfuck you. She responds now. Let me even bring it up. She responds now basically saying, oh, um, I've never I've got to bring it up because the message was cheeky. And that's when I was just like, oh, no, I'm actually going to name and shame you because you try to be rude to a baby girl. And that is not going to run. Um, and remember, I also didn't say, like, give me the money back. I didn't say any of that. Um, I didn't say any of that. So the energy that she was bringing, I was just like, okay, this is why you're going to get cussed out because I don't know who you think that you're talking to. Um, I'm just trying to find her details here because I've probably, I've initially, I think I initially moved it to junk but we'll see it'll come up eventually um i'm just yeah to me it was just disgusting disgusting behavior she ended up refunding my money but i actually hadn't asked her to refund my money i was just saying that what you're doing is disgusting um she responded to me initially when i sent my question over she responded to me initially with um oh I've been reading for people for over 20 years and I've never used Google or chat GPT or AI or a darn thing to help with my readings. Um, and what, there is a reason why people have kept coming back for, to me for over 20 years. Sometimes when we get a reading that we don't like or that we're disappointed by, we can um, sometimes lash out. Um, so now you're making me the angry black woman because you saw my name. So you thought that, or you'll categorize me as an angry black woman that I'm being aggressive. She was like, and then she ended the email with, I do not wish to be tarnished with the, um, with the brush of words that you hold. That's when I got pissed off because I was just like, what are you talking about? So I had to send her a screenshot, a screen recording of me, like, typing in no sorry me highlighting what she had sent me a section of it and then literally dropping it into google and a website coming up with the exact same thing word for word that's when i didn't get a response from her anymore i just got a notification that my money had been refunded but why do you think i would say it to you if i didn't have the proof and how many people have you been doing this to and this is the thing oriato sorry our heads are, are cheap it differs it differs 
I am an actual spiritual bad girl. Like I, and I don't say that to gas myself up. I just, I'm saying that because I know how devoted and committed, like I'm not new to this. I'm true to this, right? I do what I need to do. And so that's why my, my readings can't really be off because I, st I try, I work as hard as possible to stay in alignment. I work as hard as possible to be a clear channel for what needs to come through for people. But here you are scamming people out of money. My God, the hell that you are going to, the ways that the misery that you're going to know in this life. Wow. Wow. So initially when it happened, well, after I just sent the email saying like, this is very, very yaga yaga behavior. Don't do it again. Right. This is very spiritually unhygienic. It's very it lacks integrity. Don't do that again. I don't want my money back. I'm just letting you know that what you've done is ridiculous and nasty. I wasn't going to say the person's name. Say her name. Say her name. The eternal tarot. You fucked her around. You're going to find out. Doesn't rhyme. Doesn't need to. The eternal tarot. Wow not you being a scammer, a scammer, a scammer. I wasn't going to say anything only to realize that she'd blocked me on TikTok, blocked me on Instagram before I'd even said anything anywhere. Block, 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 blocker, blocker, blocker. You've blocked me for saying that you're a scam artist, that you're a fraud, that you're fraudulent. Wow. Her name is Lisselle. That's what I was trying to find in my inbox. It says on a website, Lisselle has been reading for clients for all over the world for almost 20 years. She has facilitated workshops on intuition and meditation in the United States and Australia. Of course, the land, the lands of lies. And is passionate about helping people discover the power of trusting their intuition. Now, I just need to take you to where she describes her method, because this is where I'm saying that she's a thief. I can't believe she's charging from th 320 pounds for a 30 minute zoom. I don't know how she's going to do that. Like, how do you do the zoom reading if where you're lifting the information from is from the internet? Or maybe she's one of them people that maybe she got an assistant and the assistant was the one that was lifting information, but you'd need to admit that, wouldn't you? I don't even want to give you excuses because I don't think it was an assistant. I just think that you're a scammer and you haven't been reading for 20 years. And if you have, you're a liar. Um, she goes, how do email readings work? Wait, wait, not that part. Um, readings are meant to clarify, not confuse. I receive messages predominantly audibly and but sometimes visually. I almost always feel. After I have written down phrases, sentences and any messages I get, I pick up my tarot deck. The tarot deck gives me a more in-depth insight into the questions asked. So if you ever wondered if a reading's for you and have no experience with the process, an email reading may be the one to start with. Um, what did she say? I pick up my tarot deck. Um, what did she do here? Hold on. Oh, I see what she's done. She's gone and she's edited her website to take out where she says that she... Um, oh, no. Oh, yeah, she's taken it down. I receive messages predominantly audibly and sometimes visually. I almost always feel after I've written down phrases, sentences and messages I get, I pick up my tarot deck. She says that this process takes about 60 minutes. She's taken all of that out of her website. I'm going to find, because I saved it. That's one thing about me. I'm going to save what you originally said, you bitch. Um, yeah, here I go. I got it. Because I knew to screenshot, because I knew she was going to go and change her website from what she had written. So it can't be proven that she's a fraud. I've got a screenshot of her website where it says, readings are meant to clarify not confuse on a piece of paper i begin to write i write from a stream of consciousness after i've tuned into the person's energy as a psychic medium i receive messages predominantly audibly and sometimes visually you see so she took out the first section i almost always feel after i've written down phrases um sentences any messages i get i pick up my tarot deck the tarot deck gives me a more in-depth insight into the questions asked the, my whole process takes about 60 minutes to complete she also knew to take that when i go back to her website now she's taken that off there as well um because you're a liar lisselle you're a liar you're a liar and where you fucked up was to email me back talking about oh sometimes we just don't like the readings that we get bitch fuck you 
like you're talking and I even mentioned like I'm also a reader so like I'm saying this to you because I'm saying to you that what you're doing is not okay like I'm also a reader like don't do that one of the statements she made made is I will happily refund you as I don't wish to be tainted with the so I don't wish to be painted with the tainted brush you wield so you're also gaslighting me you cunt this it's not even in straw of the week I'm saying it at this point because it's actually mad you're trying to gaslight me when I've got proof I just had to highlight a section of what you wrote drop it into google and and I made sure to screen record everything and send it to her like look you just pulled it off a website and that's why she removed the first bit where she was just like oh I tune in and I start free writing you don't free write what do you free write you jump onto google to do the work and then to block me to block me on all the platforms before I've even said anything v underscore eternal underscore tarot wow 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 this is the thing mars and capricorn I'm a living, breathing regulator. I will regulate your blood clot. I refuse for any nonsense people to be out here scamming people at their most vulnerable moments. People like you, I refuse for it to be to happen. I will say, I will say something. And I wasn't going to say anything initially until you try to make a, call me a liar when I'm pointing out that you've lied. Wow. Even she said that she pulled the eight of cups card. Yeah. She said, I pulled the eight of cups card uh, or the eight of cups came up and she says this is um about brave surrender rare 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 whatever she wrote hold on here we go um and even how she'd write it she says oh this was her first email when my my reading was already due she says hi kalechi thank you for the for your order for the purpose of tuning in could you please send me and she put the following information that she needed for the purpose of tuning in what are you tuning your wi-fi connection you thief you vagabond um so i sent her the information um i even apologized because i spot her name wrong when i was re um, re responding to something and so she sends through the reading she says in here um and where so all she would add at the beginning of each section is i feel and that's another thing that gave gave away the fuckery she was like i feel when i look at the energy da 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 um it is shown i feel that like you're adding these phrases right at the beginning and then you just copy and paste everything else you just paste what else you've got from the internet but you just add i feel and i'm being shown of course you're being shown of course you're being shown you're being shown in google search results you prick um so she talks about the eight of cups she says the eight of um what did she say um when i look um at this uh dynamic i draw the eight of cups this is not a good omen. The mantra of this card is the courage to walk away. This is a moving on card. Um, where, she, where is it? It's the kindness of breakups, the setting free of friends or lovers so they may walk their own paths. I go on to biddytarot.com and type in eight of cups. Or I just type it. I just take a section of that. I took the bravest of goodbyes, all of that stuff. I took that and just dropped it into Google and it brought up, I think it was Biddy Tarot and it has the exact thing word for word, the entire, the entire section word for word. So you didn't even pull a card. You just decided to write what you want. And so for me also, it just feels so sick because you couldn't even, for the money that you're asking for, you couldn't even do the thing correctly wow wow and the thing is she wasn't pulling on anything that I hadn't pulled on myself so I just knew that all the things that she was talking about was ridiculous and that's not because you pulled one card that isn't the full iteration of what you're trying to talk about like it's mad so anyway um she says um, I'm sorry you were disappointed with your reading firstly I do not use AI or Google um a darn thing for my readings but I do realize when we don't hear what we want to hear we can be disappointed or let down I have read for 21 years and somehow have managed to maintain a returning and loyal customer base I will happily refund you as I don't wish to be tainted I don't wish to be painted with the tainted brush you wield may your path unfold with many blessings my path will unfold with many blessings it continues to your path though your path though luck off everything lack off like no more path for you everything shut down 
Lai Lai Tarot, shut down. Shut it down. The Eternal Tarot is in at your website. No more for you. You're a thief. Nobody should get readings from this person. I promise you that that's thievery in the dancery. That's thievery in the tarotery. That's thievery in the astrology. No more. I'm disgusted. I'm actually disgusted. Because all of us read at different levels when it comes to tarot, when it comes to astrology. But one thing I know is that the level that I'm coming with, ridiculous so when i'm doing you the the grace of being like let me pay for how you do this so i can understand it so i see how everybody does their thing before i off offer it as a service in that moment i understood that spirit was like no go and offer the service properly because the this is what's in the streets girl this is what people are having to deal with in the streets this shit go and offer the service properly and that's how i came up with doing the email uh, one question tarot readings and they're 22 pounds like I said that's not what she's charging nowhere like near off of that because I feel that people deserve to get well thought out readings where even if you it's a case of like you're not agreeing with the things or you feel like oh I don't know if this resonates that person has done their best to read for for you in a manner that is filled with integrity and filled with light not using google that's all I'll say. So that's what I wanted to share for So You Mad. Um, the next thing on So You Mad, another person that decided to lie and then they again got regulated. Carly, baby, Carly that faked her kidnap or that's what it looks to us now that she faked her kidnap. Like it's giving Jussie Smollett all over again. Carly Russell is her name. Um, and I don't really like to shame people, but it's that it's the fact that like black people go missing black young young black people go missing all of the time and they regularly they rarely get um footage it's not covered enough that this has happened um it's not covered like it rarely gets media coverage and then you decide to go and lie um and now they've charged her she she admitted that she fabricated the kidnapping and you're so cute as well and your teeth are nice it doesn't even look like you went turkey um Authorities in Alabama said on Friday they had filed criminal charges against the woman who confessed to fabricating a story that she was kidnapped after stopping to check, check on a toddler she saw walking on the side of an interstate highway. Carly Russell was charged with misdemeanor false a reporting to law enforcement and falsely reporting an incident. The Hoover Police Chief Nick Derzis um, announced the charges at a news conference. Russell, 25, oh babe, disappeared after calling 911 on the 13th of July to report a toddler wandering beside a stretch of highway. She returned home two days later telling police she had been abducted and forced into a vehicle. Her disappearance became a national news story. Images of the missing 25-year-old were shared widely, but Russell's attorney, Emery Anthony, said she made the story up. Um, in a statement read by police on Monday, Anthony said Russell was not kidnapped, did not see a baby on the side of the road, did not leave the city and acted alone. He said Russell apologised and he asked for prayers and forgiveness as she addresses her issues and attempts to move forward, understanding that she made a mistake in this matter. Russell told detectives she was taken by a man who came out of the trees when she stopped to check on the child. She said the man put her in a car and an 18-wheel truck... Um, uh, blindfolded her um and held her at her home where a woman fed her cheese crackers authorities said at a news conference last week at some point russell said she was put in a vehicle again but managed to escape and run through the woods to her neighborhood all i'll say about that baby girl and then they said that they checked her search history and she was searching things like the film taken um how much can you take from a cash register there's a video footage of her like buying snacks and be, um having a duvet with her um taking that into a car but the duvet and the snacks weren't in there um when her car was discovered on the side of the highway a lot of people are mocking her a lot of people are ridiculing her and i get it some people made a a, a remake of the taken poster and they put token <laughs> but no why i say this is because when I read it, I got the sense that this is somebody that desperately wants to run away from their life. 
like she's been searching for ages how does one leave work or how does somebody run away like she's trying to get away from something and she should not have told that wildly elaborate story she should not have done what she did but again this is what i'm saying that what i've been able to tap into since um my ayahuasca journey is just to sensing that there's pain there that she's trying to run away from and that she needs support she doesn't need to be ridiculed so much as she needs support she shouldn't have done that because that's fucked up because there are people who are actually missing that now are less likely to be taken seriously and they weren't being taken seriously before so you know the authorities are going to love a story like this because they'll be like well that's why we didn't check because those niggers lie and then you you don't get the support that you need when somebody goes missing so yeah i girl carly baby don't please never again do that and anybody else that's thinking of doing such please don't if what you need is a break from life you you need to speak to somebody see who you can speak to but please don't do all of that because they love to make an example out of somebody um yeah it's it's very very unfortunate to be honest all the, and they will search they love searching and proving a point um that somebody did such and such they love you know they love proving a point so another don't be another fake don't tell fake stories like lasalle um the eternal tarot don't don't tell fake stories like that please um it's not fair it's not fair on people uh, I was going to talk about some Georgia stuff, segregation in Georgia, people locking people out of town halls after they've won votes. But um, it's a lot. I was going to talk about a British couple who are upset. They voted for Brexit and now they're upset because they wanted to move somewhere. Now, let me actually talk about them. Let me actually go. I was just going to like mention everything in the abstract, but let me just go into that mess. Was there anything else that I wanted to say about that um, tarot woman? It hasn't come to me. There was something in the back of my mind when I was talking, but can't remember now. Um, but Carly, yeah, girl, don't do that. All the false reporting stuff, never again. Um, it says here, a British couple in their 60s who voted for Brexit are now, um, where is it? Hold on. A British couple in their 60s have bought a bargain 15,000 euro, 13,000 pounds, three bedroom house in Italy for their retirement, but they cannot get a visa to live in it because of post Brexit travel rules. Greg Walter uh, from Winchester says he voted for Brexit, but now feels betrayed. Betrayed by who, Greg? Betrayed by who? Who? The people that tapped into your xenophobia? The people that tacked into your scarcity mindset and, and encouraged you to vote like a fucking idiot? Ha! Ha! Voted for Brexit, but now feels betrayed. We were told Brexit was not going to impact our life abroad. See? So you were already living abroad. You were living elsewhere, but you didn't want people to come and live in the country that you had stopped living in. You See how whiteness works? You really thought that you could just, like, these... um borders are just um permeable membranes and through osmosis you could just move through wherever you want to mo move through the benefits of being white i could just do what i want because those borders don't apply to me ha! life came at you what fast or how do how would they say it in french fast it's how life came to you yeah fast fast and furiously life came to you and came at you fast sorry fast <laughs> people what's it people who had second homes in europe or plan to buy one were never given the correct information on the vote outcome so if you'd known that that it was going to affect your livelihood you would have voted differently but because you thought you were voting to keep brown people to keep migrants out you thought that you were good he and his partner, Steph Appleton, purchased an old dwelling in the picturesque town of Latronico in the Basilicata region of southern Italy last year and want to relocate to the quiet village surrounded by lush vegetation to enjoy a laid back lifestyle. Oh, well, you better sit back up. <laughs> no laying back for you. You need to sit back up immediately. Or as they say in France, immediately. Yes. What's it? Aujourd'hui. I don't know what aujourd'hui means. Ignore me. Um, I, 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 I don't know. I never paid attention in French, in French class. Post-Brexit rules mean um, aujourd'hui is today, isn't it? 
Alors, let me stop before the French people are like, can actually, even Macron will come and punch you up. Leave this alone immediately. Post Brexit rules mean they can only spend 90 in every 180 days in Italy. So they applied for a special visa for non European Union citizens who have passive income from pensions, rentals, or um, what's this? Annuities. Um, but the Italian authorities told them their savings of around £85,000 were not good enough to get a visa. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> they said your money is not good here. Your pounds, your child's pounds are not good here. They need pensions, private or state, that meet the income threshold and Miss Appleton will not get her state pension for two years. Well, you better sit back up for two years, baby. The former IT manager who voted against Brexit. So you voted against it and he voted for it. You see how you see how you need to date people in this life and invest your life or plan your life with, with people in this life who are equally yoked. You voted to remain. He voted to leave. Now, can you see how his fuckery is fucking up your shit? Can you see how his fuckery is fuckinizing in your life? Look at that. Anyway, she says she's frustrated and the unclear rules are giving her a headache. No, it's not the unclear rules that are giving you a headache. It's your man. It's your man. It's your man that's giving you a headache because of the fucking idiotic way he voted. The pair fell in love with a three bedroom home over three floors with a cellar. It was on sale for 23,000 euros, 20,000 pounds, but they were able to reach a deal with the former owners. When we first applied last August, we were confident that our savings and bank accounts, which amounted to roughly 85,000, would be more than enough. But after a few weeks, they received a letter from the Italian consulate telling them that the money they had accumulated did not qualify for eligi um, eligibility because most of it was not passive income or pension. Um, I don't even want to read anymore. I'm just, all I can say to that is, nah, nah, good for you. Good for you. That's what you deserve. Because when you play silly games, you do what? You win silly prizes. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, 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 hoes. That's what you get. Because you didn't want to behave yourself. And you voted like weirdos. Good for you. Um, okay. I was going to, okay, I might as well move to straw of the week, AK, so you mad, because I'm not going to get through all of these things that I put down. I was so excited coming back from my holiday, but I can't get through all of this. So I'll cut to straw of the week. Um, I plan to have an interview with Zaina Iman, who was held um, in custody um, at Greater, one of the police stations in um, Greater Manchester Police. And um, she was held for about 40 hours, I believe, four zero, 40 hours. They stripped her naked left her topless in the cell for a number of hours um this happened i think she i don't want to misquote it but it happened a couple of years ago in fact um and she's been trying to get justice ever since because when she got her video footage back three hours of the 40 three separate hours from the 40 were missing and when she went to the doctor they said and she she claims that she was um trigger warning she claims that she was drugged and um, sexually assaulted, like raped, while she was in police custody. And when she went to the doctors, they said that she had injuries akin to that of um, sexual injuries. So that whole thing is happening. It's been covered by the news. And Zaina has been wonderful enough to say that she's happy to speak with me about this. And so I'm going to put that in this section and finish off the podcast with the other bits. So be right back. Zaina, 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 thank you for joining me today um, to talk about, I said, well, today, tonight, really, because we really wanted to make this happen. So thank you so much for, I want to say thank you so much for the work that you've been doing, for being brave um, and resilient as you have been so far, to call out the Greater Manchester Police on their fuckery um, as it pertains to how you were treated, but also like the length of time that it's taken you to get to where you are now with them. I just want to say like a massive, a massive like respect to you, like big up yourself because it hasn't, you know, it, I, I can't imagine that it's been easy. Um, how are you before we even jump into like all of these things like how are you feeling how are you can I, getting, can on, just, getting on right now can I just say thank you to you first <laughs> thank, you, thank you for giving me the platform um to be honest I am I'm overwhelmed um 
I've been doing this for like 29 months. The first two months when I started to request all my data, I didn't have the memory recall and it was purely to get them like fill in gaps of my memory. And it was only mm -hmm. in April, 2021, the same time that I joined Twitter that I'd come to the realization of what has happened. And it, it, it just feels like, like it's not real at the moment. It's not kind of sunk in from like, being not back and like doors closed in my face and nobody wanting to help and then all of a sudden literally overnight everybody believes me like I mean everyone's everybody that's known about my case mm -hmm. even in 2021 has always believed me but for some reason I couldn't progress it I couldn't get it out I was being silenced at every opportunity every organization that I was going to mm. so it's just like it's not sunk in yet. I'm. I'm not gonna lie. I. I'm tired. I. I do you know what I mean? I, I'm tired. I am. It, the lack of sleep because I feel right now because I've got the momentum. I feel like I'm under a lot of pressure to keep up the momentum. I don't want to lose it after fighting so hard for it for 29 months. Yeah. I feel really lucky to get to this stage, and I want to maximize every opportunity that comes my way. Because whether this goes in my favour or goes against me, I want to be able to look back and say I did everything in my power to help get some accountability. Mm -hmm. But obviously when I've got the whole system against me at the moment, they go, there's this mass campaign at the moment. We've only just become aware of Mr. Man's case and we're going to do an inquiry. There's going to be investigations. Mate, I've only asked for four and a half hours worth of missing footage. Yeah. What is melodrama? How yeah. long did it take to burn that footage on a disc and post it to me? Yeah. I'll be four years, tell me where it is. It's in their information branch at GMP headquarters. Yeah. How difficult is it? How many village idiots does it take to release four and a half footage? No, but the entire Greater Manchester Police Force can't do it. So they've brought in the IOPC, the oh, youth wow. mayor, Andy Burnham, the ex-victims commissioner, Vera Baird, who's openly already decided that she's pro-GMP. Oh, because what she, said, what she said about me on Sky TV when she alleges that she's only just become aware of my case via Sky is... Well, it Mr. Man's not innocent kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? We'll come to that. We'll come to that because yeah, yeah. 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 So we'll come to that because it's mad. I'm exhausted, but I I I need to keep the momentum up. I really want to keep the momentum up because as soon as I lose the traction that my story's got, they're coming for me. Do you know what I mean? They're going to shut me and down. And we won't let them. We won't let them. And that's what Thank I wish you. you. I wish you rest and and I, I wish you the ability and um the opportunity and the blessing to be able to delegate some of this to other people to help them to let them help you carry this which is why as soon as I saw what had happened to you because literally the, you know we're talking about this on a Sunday night where I saw everything on a Tuesday morning and I was just like whoa no you know and so many other people felt the same way because you're while you are an individual what's happening to what has what happened to you and what is happening to you is the story of so many people especially I find so many black people as well within uh, when they have to interact with the police um working class people travelers um sex workers people who um are you know having you know addictions and things to to drugs all of those things like they never get hurt because they're marginalized they're pushed to the side in some way and they're told that their voice doesn't matter so for those who haven't seen um the footage of they they haven't seen your interviews across all of the various broadcasters what happened can you start us back in did it start it happened in 2021 yeah february 2021 so yes yes please talk us through it yeah, 5th of February 2021. It was during the lockdown period. Um, I'd not left the house for two days, had no visitors. And like a lot of people, I struggled with lockdown. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought, Do you know what, sod it. I'll just have a one-man band party at home mm -hmm. and I'll get high. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, and then... I called a friend um, whilst high and this particular friend had never seen me in that state before. Okay. And they got worried. 
Um, so they were based in Sheffield. I was based in Salford. Mm -hmm. So they rang 999. Um, mm -hmm. They diverted from South Yorkshire Police to Greater Manchester Police. And after this 999 call, the GMP decided to request an ambulance for me. Okay. Right. Um, so this GMP requested an ambulance at 12.28. By 12.45 a.m., uh, two vans, one police car, four male officers and a female officer were dispatched for a check on welfare. Two oh, four. Four. Like, yeah, four male officers. And, and, a, a, and a female, so five, for a five welfare check. For a welfare check, were dispatched to a single female. So on the 999 call from GMP to the ambulance, because I've got the recording for that, it says f f single female, um, no history of mental health, um, no history of violence, mm. um, does have a drugs marker on a name. I've, I've got um, a caution for possession of a class A. Okay. And and obviously, I just want to say at this point that while I appreciate you um, having this conversation with me, Zaina, like you say it as much as you want to say it and what you don't want to say, because I understand that while we're talking about it um, and going through everything, this is still your life. So if anything feels a bit too raw, too tender, you don't want to talk about it, we just like move it along. But as much as you do want to say, yeah. like, this is your space to do that. And there's like no judgment here. So it's good to know all of these things, because again, I feel like these are things that they can try and bring up later and use the stigma stigma that certain things have like drug use, um, if they want to call it drug abuse, whatever the case may be they can try and use that later on but when we're talking about it it takes the power away from them yeah to be honest the footage that i've released um on channel four um mm. on sky news mm. i'm past caring um about filtering my life lived experiences and my what i've done right and wrong mm. uh, i'm i'm owning up to what 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 I've done right and what I've done wrong I'm not ashamed of it because despite taking cocaine during lockdown what was what follows I did not deserve nobody deserves that mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. the reason I want to be honest is like you said it takes away the control that the authorities are going to have over me I've mm -hmm. had I've had an ex-victims commissioner try to undermine me not only on TV, but also on Twitter. So nobody's been in touch with me. The mm. victim commissioner responded to me publicly on Twitter. Wow. More or less saying that I was a liar. So despite not knowing much about my case, according to her. But anyway, so I, I want to be transparent. Like mm -hmm. I said, that takes the power away from the police. Mm -hmm. I'm to it, putting all my skeletons out there nobody can come up and say oh well but did you know this about Zaina and did you know about that about Zaina mm -hmm. be as transparent as possible because I've not had the transparency with with my case yes so um so I can't be a hypocrite Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, um, so yeah um, so there was the marker so there was a so the um so possession so that time they what they'd stopped you and they found you in possession of they claimed to have found you in possession of class a drugs that time yeah. and that was okay well, all right. yeah yeah it was just simple caution That's okay it. okay okay, okay. Like, okay. Don't use again kind of thing okay um right so i was expecting an ambulance i'm i'm what I did was I went to the hallway window because I could see the flashing blue lights. Mm -hmm. reflections. I looked out the window and there was all these officers stood outside. I know now that there was two vans and a police car and the five officers. I, d I refused them entry because I thought, I don't want you to see I go away. Mm -hmm. Whilst I, I, I was quite comical to be fair because I, I, um, when you're drunk, you're high, whatever. But yeah. I was I don't want you here leave and it got to a point where because they persisted for so long I weren't polite I was saying fuck off I don't want you here I don't need you here and like so bear in mind they've come out on a check on welfare so they've sent a mass presence of officers to a single female that would be intimidating that was yes, scary yes, yes. and 
I, I I was quite bewildered, like, why are all these officers here? And I'm refusing them entry. But when they when they their first point of contact, what what they started doing was banging on the door, shouting through the letter back box, banging on the window. No, that's scary. I was like, no, don't want you here. Don't want you here. Anyway, it got to around about an hour's mark, and I got so sick of them. And in my head, I thought, you know what? It's my house. They're on my property. I'm mm. not letting them in. There's absolutely fuck all they can do because I've not done anything wrong at this point. Mm. But so what I did was in an intoxicated state, I flashed the officers. Um, I know, I know. Don't, don't. I know. My friend says that was your Jordan moment. Yes, it was. But <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it, it is, is. You know. I'm being honest. I'm being honest. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I flashed them, and almost immediately, the side of my property doors went through. Oh. Yeah. At that. Just after that, so top went up, round the back. So uh, any females watching, please never flash a police officer. Oh, no. um, okay. Yeah, and um, so they've walked in through the side of the property, come through the kitchen into the hallway where I was stood, um, and one started tugging at my arms, and I remember seeing words to the effect of "Oi, what are you doing that for?" Then I've been lifted up. Mm -hmm. Based in the kitchen and I'm surrounded by roughly three to four of the officers. I'm looking around because all I had heard at that point was a loud bang. So that's when the barrel dropped on the hard floor. Mm -hmm. And then I'm being picked up, placed in the kitchen. I'm surrounded by all these people who I did not want there in the first place. Mm. And they've asked me, Zaina, what have you taken? I've replied, drugs, cocaine. Now the footage shows me <laughs> I'm high. Mm -hmm. I'm like really high at this point. And because I was just, I don't know why, but my gut reaction was just to knock her glasses off her face, but not knock them off. I just swiped them because they looked too big for her face because I was that high. It's comical. Honestly, if you saw the full body one video, right, because the, the media have only put up a minute's worth. Mm. It's seven minutes worth. And if the what happened next wasn't so serious, honestly, it, it's funny. Mm, 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 but I've done, mm. It's not aggressive. It's just the fact that I was, Telling these officers to go away. I flashed them. They've all broken in. They've surrounded me after touching me without mm. consent. Mm. And they, I've just gone like this, like a child. I was giggling at the time as well. Okay. So me. it wasn't anything to cause her harm. You just no, saw anyone like, yeah, rah, their glasses are just... way too big for your head. Like, let's just place them on the I table. I just did a favour to be yeah. fair. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but um, anyway, the handcuffs have gone on. So mm -hmm. I've been... I've, I've been arrested so they've shoved my head down Ooh. put my arms behind my back right to the top where my side Ooh. of my arms were hurting dragged me out the house one officer in front two at the side one behind me now at that point I was five foot six five foot five five foot six and I weighed a mere eight stone so I wasn't a big girl you don't need four officers yeah. to me. they've shoved me in the vehicle um and the footage cuts out at 1.59. So I, can I just run through the timeline? Yes, please. So the ambulance was requested by Greater Manchester Police at 12.28 yeah. on the 5th of February. Mm -hmm. BMP officers arrived on the scene at 12.45 a.m. They finally broke in after I flashed them at 1.50 a.m. Mm -hmm. okay, but... They arrested me in between the hours of 1.53 and 1.56. And the reason why I don't know the exact time, because the log says 1.53 and the body one says 1.56. Okay. So the discrepancy. But I've been placed in the back of the vehicle at 1.59. Footage cuts out completely dead. Okay. Mm. And at the 2 a.m. footage I've managed to get from a local business, not from GMP. And that shows an officer coming to the side of the vehicle and stay in the side of the vehicle so the van if anyone's been in the back of a police van so there's a cage which can be accessed from the side of the vehicle so I was in wow. yeah so it was it's like a cage so you can access it from the side as well as like the, the back, back 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 yeah. yeah so um I remember my memory recall is as soon as that vehicle started moving my head started to spin. My vision started to go blurry, complete blackout. Wow. So from what you said then, that would mean that this particular officer was in the cage with you. When I passed out. When you passed out, if the, if they when they came in through that side. Yeah. 
yeah okay and people I cannot emphasize to you the reason I'm being honest with you is because I was so high at mm. that point when I was placing the vehicle at 1 59 a.m there was no reason I wasn't sleeping for a week I was that high Do you mm, get what mm-hmm, mm-hmm. why have I passed out so the the custody station I was taken to um from my house was just under 10 minutes away so mm-hmm. if anybody wants to google it I used to live at one uh, oh no I don't live there no more <laughs> okay 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 I don't live there, okay. anymore. Don't live there anymore okay it's okay. just people google it yeah so I, I'm in a different city, so if okay. 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 Go ahead. Okay. Swinton Park Road to Pendleton. So if you Google it, just under ten minutes away. The first sighting of me in custody is three twenty-six a.m. What? I know. I know. So one fifty-nine. The last, uh, last sighting of me when I've been placed in the van. The first sighting of me in custody is at three twenty-six a.m. I'm completely so, like. So can they track those vans? Yes, they can, but they've not gave me the vehicle. Of course, no, we know that they haven't given it, but for, for all of us who are trying to also <laughs> I work with you on this can. case, I know that I you've got, yeah, yeah, I know that you've got a legal team who are doing the best that they absolutely can do for you. Um, but for those of us who also are working this through with you and we all watch Line of Duty, so mm-hmm. they can track that van for where I'm not it, where... 100% sure, but from what I've been told, when officers arrive at a station, they have to swipe to open access the car park and things like that mm-hmm. so the officers swipe times so but and so do we know the swipe time then oh no, they won't release this information so but we do know that somebody got in one of the police officers got in through the yeah, side because, of the van and you managed to find that out because of the local business that gave you the camera footage from yeah. there because mm-hmm. if you didn't have that you wouldn't be able to prove this no. so do you and and i know that we're um getting it getting to it but do you think that you were given anything other than what you initially took like i said anybody that's taken cocaine will know when you take cocaine you're wide awake you're alert and you struggle to sleep you cannot sleep on it until it's completely out of your system so when i was placed in the van i was high as anything as soon as the vehicle started to move complete blackout i hadn't fallen asleep like i said if anybody's ever been the closest way i can describe it if anybody's ever been under general anesthesia Mm -hmm. do you know when they do the countdown 10 9 8 and then you're just you're just gone yeah blackout no memory of the van no memory of arriving at the police station no memory of being processed at the custody desk my first memory is waking up after the strip search so anyway i've arrived at 3 26 a.m mm. i've been carried into a place uh cell mm-hmm. i've been placed on the floor over two mattresses and I am um, right, so I'm unresponsive. I'm handcuffed at the rear. Mm-hmm. Um, three female officers have brought me in. A male officer is around near where the custody door is, mm-hmm. and then moves out of view from the camera. Mm-hmm. So um, I've been strip searched whilst unconscious. So I've got an officer leaning on my head, on my face, on my neck, on my back, on my arms. So they've, they're restraining me whilst I'm unconscious, not me even handcuffed. They've pulled my jeans down, mm. cut my knickers off, took something out from in between my legs. No idea what it was, but it was weight, right? And then they've cut my bra off and cut my top off. Okay, I'm sorry and, to go back to that and point. You, and and um, again, trigger... Yeah, so sorry to go back to that point. And then the trigger warning I should have put at the very beginning when we even started this conversation. So if we go back to that white thing, right? That couldn't have been a sanitary item. No, I wasn't on my period. Of that no, no, point. I'm not saying that you were, but it, in terms of anything else that would have happened. You can't tell what it is, but they've removed something. And they've removed it fairly quickly, whatever it was. Okay. But it's from between my legs. Whatever. That's what I'm thinking. So it would have, as gr- gruesome, as grotesque as it sounds, but I feel like it's important. If something was going to soak something up, right, they would want that. But again, we don't know what yeah, it I was. I get what you mean. I get what you mean. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't say, but it, describing the footage and actually seeing the footage, uh, I, I will send you a yeah. strip search without the editing that's on the media. Mm-hmm. And then see how how brutally that they strip searching me um they've used um a, a metal detector 
Um, they've left me with a pair of short, oversized shorts with their belt, unconscious, face down on the floor. And but the left- whole point, like they're strip searching you so you don't have anything to potentially harm yourself with, but you've left me with the belt. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they, 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 they say that I wasn't actually strip searched because they've not put strip search on the custody records. They've put a search on one female officer and they've got the timing wrong. So it's 3.14 on the custody records, but the first sighting of me in the cell is 3.26. Wow. Um, they said one officer and all my belongings were taken off me at 3, I think 3.14 mark, but... Mm-hmm been strip searched and everything's been taken off me at 326 they said my rights weren't administered at 314 which would which would make sense because if I'm unconscious my rights are not going to be read to me mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but greater Manchester police reckon I arrived at 215 but they've not gave me the footage for 2 a.m okay yeah okay I didn't okay. I arrived at 326 they've 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 not gave me the footage for my arrival so I, I it was weird so when I'm watching the footage and anybody that's seen the footage it's as if like so when they've like released the handcuffs they've kept hold of my hands and caught kept hold of my legs and it's like it's as if they was like saying one two three and run it's like they were mm-hmm. to wake up at any moment and they've all run out of this the cell and almost immediately I've started to come round. I've started to move Mm, mm. I walk up and I'm looking around and I'm completely dazed and I remember looking down and thinking why have I got no top on wow um, and I'm looking around this room and then I've realized I'm in a police station but I had no memory of why I was actually there yeah. absolutely no memory of why I was there so um, anyway so for the first half an hour I'm confused but from 5 a.m. to, well, from 4.30 a.m.-ish till five, for a, for a period of five hours, so brightly returned. So I was completely sober. I got dressed. I was annoying them going back and forth to the, the buzzer. Um, and then at na- 10 to 9, um, I'm sat on the bench and I'm still fully dressed. I'm still sober, mm-hmm. like... But my behaviour is starting to change. My skin colour has gone from a yellow brown to a reddy brown. I'm holding a drink. Mm -hmm. And I remember the point because I've got a memory where an officer was asking me inappropriate questions. Mm -hmm. At the point where I was asked, Zaina, have you had anal sex before? I remember going quiet. I remember going quiet, looking down and thinking, have I heard this right? I looked up at the officer's face and the smirk on his face my instinct was my reaction was just to throw the cup of whatever I you had were given. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it was at that moment I I know I remember thinking, fuck, I'm in trouble here. Ooh. That's when the footage goes off for an hour, 10 a.m. till 11 a.m. Um footage comes back on at 11 a.m. and I'm in the cell naked playing with again, me. but you were wearing clothes when yeah, before the footage cut off. And after the footage goes miss uh, goes missing or cuts out for an mm-hmm. hour, I'm back in the cell and I'm doing all this and all this and all weird sexual stuff. Um yeah. And then the footage cuts out again the following day at 1 p.m. Why did they, but could they hold you for that long? Are they allowed to hold people for that long? No, no, no. This is the thing, right? So I I want to emphasize to people that I've got no history of mental health, pre-GMP or post-GMP. And I've got my medical records for every locality I've ever lived in. Mm -hmm. So um, what Greater Manchester Police did was put me on a section 136, which is a police section. Mm -hmm. If you're out in an open space like out in public the police have a power to detain you and take you to a place of safety mm. 136 cannot be used when you're already in a place, a place of safety. safety you were in your home in my home yeah so they couldn't have used it at my home but they could also not use it whilst I was in a place of safety being the police station yeah so, so at three at 4 30 on the 5th of February they put me on a section 136 now roughly at the halfway point which was 9 45 a.m a p.m they 
called in external mental health team. Mm. And they've told the mental health team that I'm extremely violent, extremely volatile. I can't be assessed in, in person. Mm -hmm. But they viewed me on camera and just signed me off. Wow. Section two. But I viewed the footage for 9.45 p.m. for the, the official section. Again, I'm sexual. I'm just playing with myself. Okay. Right, that's it. Okay. The following day at 3.30 p.m., so on the 6th of February, they put me on another 136 section again. So it feels sinister that like they were trying to hold you there intentionally to carry on doing whatever it is that yeah. they were doing. Yeah. I'm yeah. so sorry that no, that happened. Okay. That's wild. Okay. And then what I know now is I am at 4.30 p.m. on the 6th of February. Two of my friends located me at Pendleton. They'd been struggling to find out where I was because I, they weren't my next of kin. And nobody was giving them information. So mm. I think they, get, they took a wild guess because the nearest custody station to my house was Pendleton Station. Mm -hmm. Salford. so they've turned up and said look where is she so they're like oh she's safe and well um but with sections there and that's the only information that they were given within three hours I was shipped off to a psychiatric unit incoherent I could not speak wow it was struggling to walk and my medical records confirmed that I had rectal and vaginal bleeding I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. It's important for me to tell my story so it doesn't happen again. And also to secure the footage that Greater Manchester Police have but will not part with. So Greater Manchester Police currently have an hour's worth of body worn video that they won't part with because it proves that as soon as I flashed them, that's the only reason they broke in. There was yeah. nothing life there was no breach of peace well they're saying first they said there was a threat to life then they said it was a breach of peace because i was shouting at them to tell them not to fuck off and go away yeah, and the yeah. reason it was a breach of peace because i stood there like lemons mm. so the hour of body worn video missing from the house mm -hmm. when they were outside my property and I've, I've flashed them um then the vehicle footage and the transportation and custody front desk footage where there's an hour and 26 minutes it's taken them to take me from my house to the station so there's no vehicle footage there's no footage of me coming out being processed at the custody desk the first footage starts at 3 26 yeah then 5th of february it's the 10 a.m footage so after five hours sobriety the footage cuts out at 10 a.m and then the following day at 1 p.m um there's also no footage of me walking out of the cell and being taken in a transportation vehicle to a psychiatric unit. And I believe that the reason they've not released the footage of me walking out of my cell into the transportation vehicle, I would that my memory recall that was the first memory that I had of being um in in pain, like both the front passage and the back passage. Oh. I was struggling to walk and I, I want to um be honest and open with the viewers, like or oh, whoever's listening. Um I'm a former sex worker. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have never felt pain that I felt that day. Ever. I wow. It really hurt to walk. Um I felt like a cross between like a geriatric and, you know, those bodybuilders when they're walking dead funny because they've done leg day. Yeah, I know the feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to give you an image of like how I how was. Would have been, like, your posture would have been. And I feel like I'm, I'm thankful that you said that. And I know like we've talked about this already that on this podcast, we support sex workers. We believe that sex work is work, you know, um, and that we, sex work should be decriminalized um, in order that things like this, can't happen and I've said it on a podcast before like the the further we try to push um, sex workers into the shadows because of the shame and the stigma that people try to attach to um, this industry it gives nasty people like this more power because we know that one of the tools one of the tactics that GMP the Greater Manchester Police might try is like well how do we know you said sexual injuries but weren't you know didn't Zayna do this and wasn't you know they'll try to conflate the history so uh -huh. it is important as you said to say it now say say it wherever you're saying it to be like don't try and mix up the two things 
things. And also just because I can, um, I engage and I have engaged in a line of work does not give everybody, anybody um, permission to touch my body and to violate Without my body consent. anyhow. Without you know? consent. It's about consent. Yes, about yes, health. yes. And like I said, the my, my background, Greater Manchester Police knew about my background. When I moved to Greater Manchester, I was under the public protection unit um, because of a threat to life due to domestic violence. Mm -hmm. I had markers on my address and I had panic alarms as well. Um, and I was a priority call. So if I rang 999, I went right to the top of the list due to the threat to life. But this is why it's more disgusting because they, you are, you were and are a vulnerable person yeah, for I'm so many reasons. That, yeah. Unfortunately, for so many reasons you are and they took advantage of that. That is, um, you know, that is disgusting they, they knew that there was no family they knew that I lived alone they knew that um the sex workers stuff as well because mm. they would out to incidents so I believe I was the perfect target and that would probably explain why form hail officers turned up to a check on welfare and then when the flashing happened, they would have thought, yes, yeah, see, like, you know, like the nasty way that men can think and be like, oh, well, she asked for it. She did yeah. that. So, and I, I'm just, I'm really sorry. And I feel like, you I know, mean, I, they, they will, they have to, they have to be, they, justice has to be served because I mean, exactly as you say, why should you be the quote unquote perfect victim? Why, why, you yeah. know, We're, and I compare it unfortunately to the tragic murder of Sarah Everard by Wayne Cousins another police officer and how everybody kept saying oh she was just walking home she was just walking home and I was like wow facts she was just walking home if somebody wasn't just walking home are you saying that they deserve to have had oh, happened to them what happened to her do you see what I'm saying yeah um I mean like this isn't the first experience that I've had. In 2014, I was harassed by a, a West Yorkshire police officer who lost his job after a misconduct hearing in 2016. Mm -hmm. And yet again, that was due to my background as well, because I've lived in West Yorkshire. Mm -hmm. So I just believe that there's a certain section of society that will always be targeted because they fit the criteria. So it could be the fact that you're black yeah fact that you've got mental health issues the fact that you're a abused person who's been mm. abused they they target certain people I mean the Sarah Everard case was absolutely horrific but she was white blonde blue eyed and middle class mm. would 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 a working class person that wasn't I perceived that yeah yeah I you get what I mean yeah and I, you we've been talking about it and it's interesting that you mention um about the aspects of like blackness and things like that and we you know you and I spoke briefly about it um yeah. earlier but how has your opinion changed of the police since what happened in West Yorkshire and what's happened you know from 2021 till now because I've, uh, when we were talking briefly you were like well you know sometimes you'd see things and they'll be like they did this to this black person yeah, yeah. you'd be like mm, mm. yeah I mean right so obviously the media portrayal of like black people isn't great and mm. I'm ashamed to admit that I bought into that narrative as well so when I heard that black man's been shot I went with the negative stereotypes and I thought oh it's probably because of the, it, it was mm -hmm. what I was used to hearing and I just went along with it you know what I mean so when I've had the odd person like try to discredit me that's like karma slapping me in the face now mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? but I, I I just want to point out something so throughout my life I, I have been abused by white people I have I'm from a South um, Asian background. I have been abused by a South Asian community. Not not the whole lot, but mm -hmm. from that background. But my experience, like direct experience with black people has been nothing but positive, complete opposite to what's been portrayed in the media. Mm -hmm. Like I've, I've been fighting my fight for the missing footage that proves that I was drugged and sexually assaulted during my detainment with Great Manchester Police for over 29 months. I've been shut down at every single turn. And who comes to the rescue? The marginalised group. Mm -hmm been marginalized probably the longest the black community mm. and since sky news has come out i can't emphasize how many are backing me mm. and believe me 
they've arranged protests for me. There's two protests, one on Tuesday in Manchester and one in London on Thursday. And this is yeah. for me. These are like the, the black people that deserve to get shot and deserve to be locked up. And I don't believe that narrative anymore. I'm glad. Because now, now, now I'm the one that's being branded the bad mm. one. Do you get what I mean? Well, that's... Yeah. And I, like I said, it, 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 it was a hard lesson to learn, but now I see it from the other side. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. My opinions have changed. I'm glad that they changed. I I wouldn't have wanted them to change under these kind of circumstances. I wouldn't wish this on you know anyone. Unless, but... you, unless you've experienced something, like I said, I was naive. I I believe yeah. like the people that believe that the police do no wrong. Yeah, I, that the police are there to protect you. And again, yeah, you know, I add this caveat before people start shouting up and down that we know that there are some good police officers, but we have to be honest with ourselves that the system, the institution is absolutely rotten. And there's no reason that Zaina should not have received the footage if in fact we weren't dealing with a very r- rotten institution and system. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, to put that obviously, out there. The, as mentioned on Sky News, I've made the allegations that I was drugged and sexually assaulted at some point during my detainment. Mm. Um, I made a subject access request in February 2021 to aid with my uh, aid my memory recall because mm-hmm. there was a gap in my memory at the time. Um, and it wasn't until April 2021 that I realised what had happened because uh, mm-hmm. I play, put a lot of jigsaws together, nightmares, flashbacks, the way the police were not parting with my subject access request. So I, I eventually picked up the courage to report Greater Manchester Police to South Yorkshire Police in July 2021. Yeah. After fighting tooth and nail for my subject access request, Greater Manchester Police sent me my custody records and all the paperwork in October 2021. Wow. They finally, after getting every, going through every single official route, so two legal teams, IOPC, ICO, GMCA, mm. Police Crimes Commissioner, all of them, um, I finally got the footage um, in February 2022. And the memories that I had and I told South Yorkshire Police about are in the footage mm. that I received like in the following year. Yeah. So I know that my memories that are in the missing footage, so the footage that GMP have not provided are not wrong. Yes. And since April 2021, I've been telling everyone that Greater Manchester Police are protecting sex offenders and I was yes. sexually assaulted during my detainment. And I, I understand that some people might not believe that, but there's one very easy way to prove or disprove my allegation mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. by releasing the four and a half hours worth of footage that Greater Manchester Police will not disclose. Now, Sky News showed clips of the footage, so they showed me the swipe of the officer's glasses, mm-hmm. um, the, the, the footage from my, the local business that shows an officer enter the vehicle, mm-hmm. they showed the strip search video, they also showed um, footage of blood dripping out of me, so um, I'm completely naked and there's specks of blood, now women could verify this, um, period blood is not watery it, mm. it's of a thicker consistency yeah, yeah. and it kind of sticks to your leg if you don't catch a not yeah, drip yeah. out of you kind of yeah, thing yeah. I'm sorry to the men that are listening that I'm being graphic but I'm just trying to emphasize the symptoms that I had leaving that station like I was bleeding from both passages and I was struggling to walk. So anyway, I've been dumped in a psychiatric unit at 7.30 p.m. PM on the 6th of February. So I'd been with Greater Manchester Police. In my, when I've counted the hours, over 40 hours, so about 40, 41 hours. Um, So I've arrived at the psychiatric unit, but can I emphasize, so my, so it's, it's definitive that I arrived at the hospital the psychiatric unit at 7.30 p.m. Mm-hmm. I'm at Manchester Police's custody records at 7.47 p.m. I'm being released on, without bail. But at 8.20 p.m. I'm still in the cell. 
this is how nonsensical wow. the book is and do you know after I'll, I've obviously got your email address I can send mm -hmm. you a retransfer link and all I want you to see is my arrival so the 3 a.m footage mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the, their 8 p.m footage the following day um, and then compare it to the custody records and I'll send you this um, uh, uh, the page on my cust um, medical records that says that I was in the psych ward at 7.30. Their entire custody log does not match their custody. Wow. Custody. And it's got nothing to do with like it being an hour out. It just, it, none of it matches. None, yeah, none of it makes right. sense. And, and that for me is quite cruel because when I was asked about anal sex, I recognise one of the, the officers that asked me that in the footage that I do have. But when I've looked at the custody record, I can't pinpoint his name because it's completely out. Wow. So I've seen the officer, but I can't name him because the custody record at no point. Is he mentioned? Yeah, it's just all... It, none, and, it's, it's, and it's done intentionally to too kind of confused and too obstruct so you don't get yeah. all of the information well, that you well, need when they sent me the footage they did actually send me 40 odd hours worth of footage but what they did was they sent it in non-chronological order so all the hours were mixed say. up but they also sent me footage from the 7th of february i wasn't even there on the 7th of february so I'm, i was just playing the footage because i didn't have a clue i just thought it was a file name so i'm playing the footage and i'm thinking Bloody hell, I'm bonkers. None of this is making sense. And then I'm looking at the timestamp. I'm like, hold on. This isn't even in chronological order. Mm. So I spent the whole night putting it all into chronological order because in the back of my head, I'm thinking, I've been accusing them of drugging and raping me over a, some point during the 40 odd hours I was with them. But they've gave me 40 odd hours worth of footage. Mm. And I thought, I've, I've, I'm mad. Mm -hmm. or, well, do you know what I mean? But it's only when I put it into chronological order and I have you the original. What's missing? Yeah. You'll see what's missing. And like I said, Tia, so just to recap, right, 12 28 a.m. on the 5th of February, GMP request an ambulance. That ambulance 12... never came, right? It did, but after I'd been arrested, it was too late then. I'd already okay. got wasn't seen i do have the footage for the ambulance arrival from the cctv from the shop okay it was across the road so like i said so a recap 12 45 um they arrived at my property 150 they break in within three to six minutes so 153 to 156 they they arrest me 159 back of the van no footage then till 326 mm. So an hour and 26 minutes to do a 10 minute journey. Then I'm clearly sober after the strip search for about five hours. And then the footage comes out and I'm like, I'm giving an audition for a poem video or something, wow. you know, just yeah. very sexual. Um, and then the following day, the footage comes out, um, the footage goes missing for an hour. Um, so I believe that I was drugged and raped up um, in, at some point during the missing hours in custody. Now, the reason I don't say the vehicle is because I passed out in the vehicle, so I don't know what happened. I hear you. I hear you. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. because date rape was used, whilst I've, I would say I've, I've regained a significant amount of memory recall, and the reason I believe I've remembered as much as I have is because I was a recreational user of cocaine, so my tolerance to drugs is slightly higher than your average yeah, drug. Yeah. So everything that's happened, it seems like, I don't know it sounds a bit weird, but it's happened for a reason. Like if I hadn't taken cocaine that night, I wouldn't have been arrested and then I wouldn't have been drugged. And now I, I wouldn't be the one that's exposed. And uh, if I didn't exist, then this wouldn't yeah. come out. So God knows the next person. And I'm many, as many people that have been abused or raped, male or female, you will know that it's, it's very hard to speak out. Yeah. yeah. You know, because there is still a stigma. There's a low um, conviction rate. And there's a lot of victim blaming. Mm, um, right. so 
it, it, there's a lot of things but like I said right so they've obviously branded me psychosis and whatnot but I'm at the psychiatric unit so they've decided to put me on a drug-free assessment for two for the for the entire duration mm. because whilst I was incoherent and my speech was slurry and I was talking like 50 miles per hour and I I remember when I was in the seclusion unit so that's when you're behind a glass screen and mm -hmm. you're 24 7 even when you're going to the bathroom so I'm talking to them I'm thinking that they're understanding what I'm saying but none of them understood what I was saying so I was resorting to like like pointing in places and mm. showing them where it hurt and I even remember because they weren't listening to what I was saying I knew I was safe now because they weren't listening to what I was saying I actually peed in a cup just to show them yeah. that the blood in the cup and they still didn't get it. But um, I managed to say the word rape. So that was very lucky because I was, wasn't was given any like mental health medication. Yeah, so okay. after two days, I was put in a normal ward. And it was on day three. The doctor actually said to me, Zaina, we believe that you were spiked and sexually assaulted. And mm. at this point, my memory had started to fade. So whilst I was having like memories of the police station, I learned very quickly not to say that the police raped me because the hospital thought that was paranoia. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so yeah. I learned very quick not to say that. But then my memory started as the drugs whatever drugs were in my system like or the effects of them were coming out I was coming round and coming sober but my memories were going away with it as well mm -hmm. uh, so their hospital told me I said but how can you be so sure when I'm not and they said look Zena, how do you explain like the pain that you're feeling here down sure. here yeah back. you know like how, how and they so what they did was on the ninth they made a referral to the sexual assault referral center to have me examined. So it wasn't me that said I'd been drugged and spiked. It was the hospital. And um, there's an extract in there. Don't quote me word for word, but it more or less mm -hmm. reads it. Um, because obviously I've got a lot of stuff mm -hmm, that would mm -hmm. say. Um, so it says, um, Zena is complaining about bleeding. Doctors are aware. And then it said um, Zena believes that she was drugged and uh, raped um, before coming to Meadowbrook. Um, the whole ward of, is of the opinion that this is not a delusional belief right. due to her ongoing pain symptoms. Now that, and I'll I'll send you this that record as well, um, because I can send it to you via WhatsApp. Um, so it was the hospital that reported it. Um, and like I said, when I regained majority of my memory which carried on progressing in between April and July and then with the data and the research that I've done investigating my own case via making subject access requests and mm -hmm. um, I've got a very very full picture of what exactly happened to me but I tend not to talk about my memories as much purely because um I can't prove them because great. We're told that they're not reliable. Yeah, we're told yeah. that all the time. Yeah, yeah. and um, Greater Manchester Police have the the footage, so I tend to talk about what I can prove. So yes. the officers that came to my house, the time that they broke in, one entering the vehicle, the footage going missing, the footage showing me bleeding, my hospital records showing, emphasizing what I'm saying that I was drugged and sexually assaulted. Now, I started, I joined Twitter um, and I started telling everybody, I sent out letters in Salford mm -hmm. telling people what had happened to me. Um, so I've started campaigning since April 2021, just wow. to get my voice heard. Um, got shut down via every official route. They mm -hmm. all closed ranks on me. But all I've ever asked for is four and a half hours worth of missing footage. That's there. Yeah. That's and it. so how can we help now? What do you need us to do as listeners, I, I, as anybody that comes across what you've experienced? What do you need us to do? Right. So if anybody else has um, experienced something similar to me, my like I've been doing this for 29 months and... I would always say speak out. And when I say speak out, tell as many people, yes, you'll get ignored, but it only takes one person to listen to you for it to be a game changer. 
that one person for me was a former BBC producer who went to work for Channel 4. Mm. She gave me a platform on Channel 4 to cover one element of my story. Mm. That, was, that picked up a small momentum and people started to believe me even more and champion me even more. But it was only this month when Sky came out I've literally got the support of 99% of the public and the public are saying Andy Burnham's in the wrong, the mayor, the ex commissioner is wrong, great, and Manchester police are wrong because, as I said in Sky News, there's one very easy way of discre- like disproving what I'm saying. Just release the footage. Like, release, release the, the footage. footage. But I say, say it with so much conviction that I was drugged and sexually assaulted but during my detainment, yeah. because I know they can't give that footage. Because and they it, can't. And they keep saying, oh, we're going to have an additional, and we're, we've referred something else to the IOPC to investigate. Oh, the former head of the IOPC allegedly has raped a 12-year-old yeah, girl. Like, we yeah. like that, that. We don't care what you keep referring to the IOPC. We yeah, just want the, the footage. Is, right. So, right, uh, the Assistant Chief Constable for Greater Manchester Police has re- lied to Channel 4 by saying that it, a strip search was not a strip search and that is a strip search on the yeah. page you cut my knickers off yeah. and my part that is a strip search you use the metal detector that is a strip, strip search, search yeah. apparently they used a different legislation but when sky news questioned them about what legislation they didn't reply they want to play with semantics and they're used to playing with people that they can just like confuse and gaslight everything and, yeah and uh, the assistant chief constable also said that one previous referral was made to the IOPC. There was a number of referrals made to the IOPC by Greater Manchester Police, and the IOPC flip, sent it back to Greater Manchester Police to investigate. For themselves, now, uh, yeah. Andy Burnham reckons that he's only been aware of my allegations for a couple of weeks. I wrote to every every official, so Andy Burnham, Vera Bird. Uh, all the major players under Boris's administration, I mm. wrote to. I've even got a letter from the Home Office. All these people have been aware of my allegations since 2021. Nobody has intervened. And now that Sky News has covered my story and this yeah. is such a stir, they're all pretending to do, do something. Referrals to the IOPC. I want to emphasise to people the IOPC investigated my subject access request. They found in Greater Manchester Police's favour. They are aware they did nothing. The yes, ICO, the ICO reckoned that GMP acted accordingly as well. Yeah. Um, I've got all the letters for this. Um, so they've all been aware. So they're doing at the moment, they've referred to the IOPC for the millionth time. They're now doing an inquiry. Would it not be easier to just give me the four and a half? Just months? release the footage. <laughs> all of this dance that we're doing, just give yeah, the fucking footage yeah. over. I mean, like, what is this? On. Like, like, look, right. So, right, if you've if you've done something on this recording, and like, and I'm accusing you of doing something, rather than go around the houses and have me humiliate you, just bloody release the footage and say, look, she's meant oh, that I didn't do anything. They were really. counting on misogyny. They were counting on misogyny. They were counting on people just being like, oh, look at la 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 la, and going with that, so they would never uh, have to do it. They I were mean, counting on that, and they weren't expecting for you to be believed they weren't expecting for somebody to listen enough for everything to gain traction and for them to be out in this way they just thought you'd be another woman that would be like oh she'll go quiet in time she'll tire herself out oh don't shut up naturally i have got a big gob <laughs> i over talk everybody i can't help it i've got so much to say um and now we've got a platform i just want to make the most of it but like i said all i've ever asked for is my footage um, and that's the one thing that they're refusing to give. And and you know what? I would like to know, and if Greater Manchester Police tune in, where the hell is the Chief Constable? He's very quiet on all this. Very, very, very quiet. Very quiet. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, I need to secure the footage. Now, it's it's a bit of a catch-22. I've got to be realistic. I know that I'm never getting that missing footage because I know what's on that footage. But never say never. Know. This is why we need the power of the people and this is why we need pressure. And because think, if they don't release it, I think that that's worse than releasing it. Right. My biggest fear right now is because obviously I've heard like Andy Byrne and Vera, like Dean Vera Bade lie 
on TV and I've got the documents to counteract the, their lies. But also the IOPC have lied in their statement as well. Um, I know if I lose momentum now and my story gets forgotten, they're... I'm done for basically and they're going to continue doing what they did before everybody found out about my story and I'm going to be honest I'm not even bothered that it's happened to me and I've had to humiliate myself the way that I've had and speak so publicly I was drugged I was raped it's going to be with me forever but I want people to remember over 29 months later, nobody's been held accountable and these officers are still working, but they could be raping somebody as we speak. Yes, yes. And that's and, why we need the urgency. And, yeah. Uh, so Sinead Foley is a mixed race girl from Birmingham and she was left naked in a cell. Um, she comes from an abuse background. But the other two girls that were on... Um, Sky News with me were white, so they're not bothered about your skin color. color it's, as yeah. long as you, it's as long as you are a vulnerable person. Mm -hmm. they, knew, they knew that I had no age and you know, like no family, yeah. and who's gonna come for her? Like you know, we'll get away with this. Like we can yeah. put her as a junkie or a prostitute. Of, exactly, of, of, and, and even as you like, mentioned, even as you mentioned that, you mentioned that what the, you said three white girls, yeah. To, to two white girls, but two white Maggie, girls, but mixed Maggie race on. girl, yeah, two white girls, mixed race girl, and then there's you, okay, South yeah. Asian, right? And then no dark skinned black women, right? And so, even to, to the point, what, do you see what I'm saying? That like even when we're saying that they don't necessarily care about race, that you are colorism still plays a role because we know that this similar would have happened to dark skinned black women, well, yet they I wouldn't even have made it forward, yeah, right. So now I've got the documentation for this, so I'm happy to send you the documentation yes, so you can view it. It does happen to black women. Yeah. Now my when I was getting nowhere and the police and none of the government body, well, the official police complaints bodies were taking me seriously. I got an op opportunity to speak publicly about my experience in May 2022. Mm -hmm. I jumped at the chance. And that was on the 8th of May, 2022. On the 11th of May, GMP picked up my complaint um, and they decided to investigate the allegations. Um, on the 20th of May, I was assigned an officer. Mm. And I have um, a couple of officers that are helping me behind the scenes. Some of them are current. Um, and one's a former one who appeared on Sky News. Mm -hmm. And they go back and support me 100%. And... I told them I saw so I've been assigned an officer to investigate my allegations. So I gave the name. They go, you are fucking kidding me. I says, why? They go, in 1984, and, and you can Google this. It's in the public mm. domain. In 1984, the, my, the officer that was assigned to my case was accused of the cell rape of a 20-year-old girl. Off. Jackie Jackie Berkeley's, Google it, Jacqueline Berkeley's, Jackie Berkeley's. So 1984, this happened and they set up the Jackie Berkeley, I believe, foundation and the high profile black people of in of the 80s. I don't know. Mm -hmm, the names, mm -hmm. I was born in the 80s, so I don't know the names. And um, because there was a lot of tension between the black community and the police in Moss Side at the time. Yes. So a lot of black people were backing Jackie Berkeley's justice for Jackie. But because it was pre-CPS, she mm. was shut down and she was accused of making false allegations. Wow. This officer is an actually a retired police officer now, but he now works as a civilian officer in professional standards at Greater Manchester Police and he investigates sexual misconduct. He is caught accused because Jackie Berkeley's story was, I believe she was of a similar background to me in terms of whatever, <laughs> but um, she was pinned down by two female officers and two male officers. The female, one of the female officers that pinned her down is now working for the ICO so is this why I've not got my subject access request in its entirety and this I did with Greater Manchester Police and said oh they've acted accordingly so this doesn't it happens to it's happened to a black girl exactly and that's what I'm saying that it happens and and there are many 
and I believe that there are many more as there are many more white women as there are many more South Asian women like there are many more and I feel like by you sharing what's that happened to you it means that more of them come you know come forward hopefully so there's more solidarity but I implore like black women dark-skinned black women who have a, and they feel safe enough to speak up as well to show that this isn't something that is just isolated like it is across the board and something needs to be done but I'm so grateful that you shared this well, because I think if anything it shows that there's a massive network at play and it's been well, like what, what are the chances though of me being assigned the very officer that was accused of raping a black girl like all them years ago mm. and like I said the information that I've gave you people because I've been advised not to mention officers names yes yeah yeah like, Google Jackie Berkeley's. The information is hard to find, but it is still out there. Um, you'll see the officer's name um, and you can go to his LinkedIn profile and see that he's got 40 odd years worth of service, blah, blah, blah. So we've got sex offenders in the police force. Investigating. We've been knowing. Yeah, we've been knowing. Yeah. And this is how and they keep the everything thing, thriving because the they support each other. The, the thing about I admire about the black community now is how you all shout loud and proud and you stick together yeah, and you yeah. don't back down well in terms of police corruption, when it comes to police corruption like yeah yeah you, you guys back each other and say no this is another one of our men you've killed this is another one that you've do you know what I mean yeah, yeah. in that context I'm talking with regards to the police and I just want to say thank you to everybody that's taken me in like and yeah. said we're not going to let your experience be forgotten we're going to help you get your footage um like I said even if it's not for me just bear in mind that over 29 months later the officers that did whatever they did to me are still serving and if you don't believe what I'm saying why won't Great Manchester please release the footage what's no, no and that's the thing we've been we believe you and we just need that for I can I can speak for the majority of my listeners hands down that we believe you and I that's why I so much very much wanted you to you know come on and I, I feel like when we spoke I said to you I just need like 20 minutes of your time and it's been <laughs> more than an hour or something oh I'm sorry, but, I'm sorry. No, no 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 but I, I appreciate you you know being able to give that time because I wouldn't want you to have to recall and recall and do this over and over again so I appreciate that and we will support we will um, hashtag whatever you need um, um, people will follow you and so you can direct people to what you need them to do so what's your twitter handle it's at iman zena so capital i m a n capital z a y n a but could you do me a favor could you put the channel four on the sky news um link as well so for people that don't know the and they can watch that yeah 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 so because i'll add it to the, when i post it on twitter i'll add it on there as well because when you talk about trauma i i do realize that you can waffle and you it might not make sense because no, it makes what, absolute when I, sense when I, and that's why some things you've said we've gone back again just to highlight you've made absolute sense but just to okay. tie everything in because i i know that i get it because i've been researching since i heard of you and saw um the footage but making sure that everybody else that's listening understand as well and i know that for some it could have been a very very hard listen but thank you to them for listening as well and thank mm -hmm. you to you for sharing and you know that you've got my support you've got my number all of them things there like you know any way that i can I mean, amplify like anything I holler I will never, ever ask for money, ever. All I'm asking people is to keep sharing my story, keep helping me raise awareness. Don't let the story die out because yeah. I'm, I am believe that I'm so close to getting them, you yes. know? Yeah. What they've done to me and God knows how many other women yes. um, help me do this because I can't do it on my own I've done it for so long and I've got it to this point so long but I'm on such a high with this and they're losing at the moment and they are absolutely I've been told that they're shitting bricks apparently they're having gold meetings because they don't know how to get me to shut the fuck up basically oh, and you won't and we got no, I, won't. I can't oh, thank right. you Zayn. <laughs> thank and, you so much and we stand you in solidarity we stand in thank solidarity you. with you and yeah we'll 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 get this i believe like we'll, we have to get this all right can 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 i just emphasize that so there's a protest in manchester as well yeah. in London, and if you can attend and show greater manchester please that yeah that'd be we'll do that thank you so much all right thank you
Thank you, Zaina. Thank you so, so much for um, speaking on the podcast and sharing your experience. I appreciate it so, so much. All I can say is my foot in the shot again. All I can say is <laughs> forever and always, fuck the police. Like the straws will continue to fly because it's not just about Met Police in London. Like it's not about just the police in the UK. It's not just about the police in America. It's not just about the police in Europe. Like there is a problem. We have a problem across the globe. And we need to talk about it. So I'm just going to jump to this letter that was sent in about, um, let's see if I've got it up here, the carnival. Um, what do I want to say? I know that there's something, it's when I finish recording, I'm going to remember that there's something I wanted to say about that tarot stuff. But I can't remember for the life of me. Anyway, if you want to get your um, email, one question tarot readings, you go to kelechiokafor.com. Um, forward slash shop and you'll be able to purchase it there and you can write your question there everything's self-explanatory once you get there so letting you know that that's there now anyway this letter for straw of the week says hi Kalechi I hope you're doing well I love your podcast and I listen every week I wanted to send you a quick email to nominate the city of Rotterdam and the organizers of Rotterdam Unlimited Carnival my family have visited the yearly summer carnival since 1984 my grandmother used to joke that everywhere Caribbean people move to carnival will come to life it used to be the place for my family to come together and spend time together not so much anymore most of the younger generation of my family considered it a colonized commercialized event in its current form the summer carnival in Rotterdam used to be a Caribbean party organized by Caribbean people however about 20 years ago the council of Rotterdam got involved and took over the organization they claimed it was because the carnival brought in about 1 million extra tourists and visitors and it cost so much to provide security and police to ensure safety for all visitors and participants well what they did is change the name from Caribbean summer Car uh, carnival to whatever name the highest paying sponsors name um, they removed all mentions of Caribbean from all marketing. Year after year, it became clear to many it was a money grab for the council with not only money generated from the extra tourists, but also from the many big sponsors. Nowadays, it's called Rotterdam Unlimited, which is ironic because in the article attached, you can read the limitation the council is putting on the event. It was unavailable that the council would come and police how we celebrated uh, it was unavoidable that the council that's what it should have said uh that the council would come and police how we celebrated um by the way if i'm going to be arrested for anything i want it to be for vulgar in quotation marks dancing at a street party and that in a country where prostitution and smoking weed um in the streets is allowed challenge accepted lol let me see if i can read this article so basically a straw goes out to them um it says here, Alcohol Sales Limited and quote unquote vulgar dancing banned at Summer Carnival in Rotterdam. The Summer Carnival in Rotterdam will be subject to stricter rules and harsher enforcement this year. The city is limiting supermarket alcohol sales to um, one non refrigerated drink per person, and the carnival organizers banned vulgar dancing. Uh, the municipality of Rotterdam limited supermarkets and convenience store sales of alcohol to one drink per customer. The drink cannot be cooled, so unrefrigerated and people um, are not allowed to drink it on the street. A similar alcohol ban always applies to the city centre streets, but according to the municipality, retailers and citizens don't comply with the agreements that apply during events. The police will therefore actively enforce the rules during the summer carnival. The organiser of the Summer Carnival itself decided to ban vulgar dancing this year. Dancing can be very provocative and or vulgar, especially in pairs when certain sexual movements are limited, are imitated on the street. That is not allowed, the organisation said on the website. The organisers also implemented guidelines on clothing and other forms of expression. It is strictly prohibited to engage in offensive behaviour in any way, the website reads. Um... According to the, what is it, the director of Rotterdam Unlimited Summer Carnival, can't pronounce your name, Ava, I can see it's the first part, says here, 
there have been complaints of offensive behavior in recent years and the organization wants to prevent it. Um, according to Ava, this is more a call for decency than hard rules. She acknowledged that sexy dancing is inextricably linked to the summer carnival and it is very difficult to distinguish between sexy and vulgar. Enforcement will therefore be on a case by case basis, she said. The only dance band by name is bubbling, according to her whatever bubbling is often called called a mating dance because it involves two people rubbing their genitals against each other we don't want that she said fuck you lot fuck you lot and just the way that you colonize everything it's the same with notting hill carnival i can see notting hill carnival going down this route as well because of the pussy club of Vora of chelsea kensington and chelsea doing a similar thing this um uh carnival was organized by the people for the people they were doing their thing and this is why it's important to remember what carnivals are actually about because carnivals in essence are a form of protest and so people saw them and thought oh that looks fancy and colorful and they wanted to get into it they wanted to join it until you dilute it of its meaning and then you commercialize it so as to dilute it of its meaning. And this is why not everything needs a big name sponsor. Because in with, with the big name sponsor also comes rules and regulations that a lot of people might not like. So I want to say a massive like suck your mum to the people who have done that to the Rotterdam Carnival. Because I know so many people who used to look forward to going. And now you're talking about... Um, vulgar dancing again the way that you hypersexualize um and denigrate um cultures black cultures is wild i'm like i get the things that people have to say about carnival and how they feel about it and the dancing but if it's not of your culture you can really just mind your business and let the people who enjoy it get on with it you don't have to participate you can just face your front go away for the weekend don't be around let people enjoy their things like the word the wording is so loaded and even the um a one unrefrigerated drink like you like to suck the fun out of everything everything you make everything so dry so boring what the fuck yuck suck out suck out my last straw well is it a straw i've given this straw to before um but in regard it's in regards to baby Aisha because I knew it I had a very sneaky suspicion that baby Aisha's mum was a black woman you know I told the story again trigger warning I told the story I, I read the article rather um months back about um the mother who was forced to give birth or gave birth to her child in a prison cell and the child didn't live and she had to bite through the umbilical cord I talked about all of that um and she at the age that she was at the time all of this stuff but it says here coroners concluded that the death of an 18 year old black woman's full-term baby in a prison cell in surrey was contributed to by serious operational and systemic failings so that i say that that's to do with racism i said from the moment that, I, that they said that she had a bad attitude and she was such and such i said ah, ah, ah she must be black she must be black for them to be using those terms black or working class or something or maybe um one of the travelers something that there was something about it i was just like what you are this is loaded what you've written here is very very loaded but the inquest um aisha cleary was born and died in hmp bronzefield during the night of 26th of uh, september 2019 the coroner found systemic failings contributed to her being delivered in a prison cell without medical assistance and losing the chance of survival the mother rihanna cleary was excluded from mainstream education and taken into care as a young teenager the coroner found rihanna had been let down by camden social services who took too long to take responsibility for her as um, a former looked after child rihanna realized she was pregnant after after being arrested whilst living in in a supported hostel in Camden in August 2019 she was remanded to HMP Bronzefield the largest women's prison in Europe she was six months pregnant and was told her child would be removed minutes after birth realizing she was not going to get the help she needed to challenge this in prison Rihanna tried to apply for bail However, she did not have um, a bail address to go to and her offender manager who described Rihanna as a gangster so you come on gangster refused to help rihanna asked the inquest why her concerns and health needs were ignored she said that she wondered at the time if it was being if she was if she said 
she said that she that she wondered at the time if I was being treated differently from other women in prison because of my race, because I was young or because of my past. The coroner was strongly critical of the midwifery care um, provided to Rihanna by Ashford and St. Peter's Hospital Trust while she was a prisoner at in HMP, HMP Bronzefield. He found that the approach of the lead safeguarding midwife was highly inappropriate and un unprofessional. Wow. A midwife being anti-black? I, I, I can't imagine it, Clemmie. Um, after concerns were raised about the risks related to Rihanna's pregnancy a decision was made by prison healthcare staff to place her under extended clinical observations no such observations were ever carried out, um, carried out. during the evening of the 26th of September she went into labour she was in serious pain and used the cell intercom to desperately request a nurse or ambulance her multiple calls were ignored and the intercom was later disconnected by a prison officer who is now under investigation and should also be under under a prison because that negligence i want to say it's manslaughter by you turning off that intercom you are complicit in that but in baby aisha dying under the jail twice in the night rihanna's cell was checked extremely briefly by prison officers who shone, shone a torch through the hatch as part of a routine roll count each check lasted one to two seconds before the officers moved on to the next cell neither noticed anything rihanna subsequently gave birth alone in her cell which she told the inquest was a harrowing experience rihanna did not understand that she was in labor just that she was in extreme pain she lost blood and passed out in the early hours of the morning she woke up in the cell being unlocked she woke up to the cell being unlocked at 8 15 a.m but again the prison officer did not notice the blood all over the cell or rihanna with baby aisha over 12 hours since the first she first rang the cell bell Briefly after her cell was unlocked, two other prisoners alerted prison staff. While the coroner found that Aisha had air in her lungs, he found the evidence was not sufficient to confirm whether or not it was a stillbirth, concluding that it was possible Aisha had been born alive. The coroner rejected an argument made by Sodexo, the Ministry of Justice and Ashford and St. Peter's um, NHS Foundation Trust, that Aisha's death should be treated as a stillbirth and that the coroner had no jurisdiction to make the critical conclusions he went on to do. The coroner found that if Rihanna's labour had been identified and she had been transferred to a hospital, there was an opportunity to take effective steps to ensure baby Aisha's survival. Following the conclusions, Rihanna clearly, uh, clearly said, nothing can change the nightmare I went through or bring Aisha back however I am grateful that the coroner has recognized that London Borough of Camden let me down and that the prisoner the, and that the prison as a whole failed me in so many ways um Rihanna is represented by inquest lawyers group members Elaine M McDonald of BJC solicitors um and Mayor Sikand KC and Tom Stote of Doughty Street um, is it Doughty Street? They are supported by Inquest senior caseworker Celine Kavav. Um, I'm just reading their Instagram names. Rihanna, baby girl, I'm sending you all of the love. Like, I'm sending you so much love. Like, I can't believe the ordeal that you have gone through. And I just, right now in this moment, I'm with all of my heart, I'm sending you literally all of my love. Because, wow. Fuck you, HMP Bronzefield. Fuck you, Camden Council. Because this is the way, these are the ways in which you leave black girls to suffer. You lot talk all of the time about, oh, we've got to break the cycle of offending and we've got to do da da about crime and do da 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 about this, but you fail. You fail at every hurdle. You drop at every hurdle. I'm so sorry, Rihanna, that all of these motherfuckers failed you. And my love goes out to baby Aisha. Rest in peace, baby girl. I can't imagine the turmoil. And I'm still so angry about all of it. And the fact that they even had the cheek to come and argue that, oh, well, just rule it as a stillbirth. Fuck you. Because no person who's pregnant should be in a prison cell. Like, it, no. Ugh. Sending you so much love, Rihanna. So, so much love. I want to announce something, but I think I should wait because I want to announce it when I've got all my bits together and so everything's ready to go. 
but one way or another, I want to be able to focus on the impact that people who have been to prison um, have, you know, the the impact that they experience and how we um, as a community can better support them. But I'll talk about all of that once I've, you know, crossed my T's and dotted my I's. But it's funny because I started this episode saying how much I want to step back and stop doing certain things. But I know what I'm built like. Like, I... I want better for this world and in one way or another I'm going to contribute to us having better I'm going to like I don't even want to say it's a case of do or die because it's do and live I will live I will thrive I will know joy I will continue to know joy I'll continue to know peace I'll continue to know the love of divinity and the love of those around me and as I go on to share that love as well I will I refuse to walk this earth lonely and and think about oh where's the support coming from from my community I'll continue to meet destiny helpers and so will all of us that choose to walk a path that means that we can be of good to this life so that's what I'll say there like I said um 22nd of August there's an event 22nd of so 22nd of August there's an event um 12th of September book launch 16th of September, book club with shelf interest, talking about Edge of Here. 7th of October, live show of Say Your Mind podcast in Peck Nam. Is that all of the things? Get yourself your the email tarot readings. The one question, one question you can order or you can, you know, one question at a time. Basically, you can buy many questions if you want to do that. You can do that by many questions. You can join Store Society um, on patreon.com forward slash Kalechi or Carfor to get your month ahead reading sent to you every month. Um, order the book if you want. Get your tickets if you want. Whatever. Here's what it is. Ugh. I've covered a lot. I've talked a lot. I've been Kalechi or Carfor, and this has been SYM officially known as say your mind unofficially known as what what that's right suck your mum catch you on the flip side peace it's the ben spoonani woman is baby boys baby girls you need to hear this so sit down sit down receive this realness make sure your cup's ready for the tea we are go sip it yo hard time scrolling for your long shorts you might learn something you never know could let you find and she's one of a kind don't say you mind say you mind